On today's episode of Let's Talk FGO, hey, there's that Guda Guda 3 thing going on right now. We're going to talk about that, and mostly that, and then maybe some other stuff. So uh, we're going to roll. Yeah, that's it. Hi, I'm one of your hosts. Uh, I am Omega, and I don't have a, a cool title or joke or anything. I just exist. Lucky he exists, too. Mm-hmm. And most of them just uh, exist in, in a time period. We live in a society. Everyone, I hope you are enjoying Fate, Grand Order, a.k.a. not your usual Guda Guda. And while we here at Studio Omega like to bring you the latest NFGL related news and memes, we will be talking about the current and future events for both the JP and EM version of the game. So anyone not want to spoil should try and not get shot. There is a very serious mood whiplash in this event. Oh yeah. We'll talk about that when we get to our actual impressions. But yes, hi. So let's talk FGO. We do stuff. And, uh, oops, excuse me. A little burpy. Uh, it is time for me to remind everybody. That uh, this episode is brought to you by our patrons like Ahaka Comics, Blacklist OG, Carlos Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Dent, Nestor Flores, Rogue Robin, Shawnee P, Some Game and Bob, Sodas on Over 24, Saturday 23, and Video Gamer 75. And if you like what we do and want to see us do more, you can subscribe to the Patreon. You get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies and with us out. Thank you for your support, everybody. Thank you. And uh, yeah, and actually, we'll uh, probably be more on WhatsApp, but we can talk about some of the stuff that I think, you know, patrons enable us to do. Enable fun things and other stuff. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I guess let's just roll down the line, because there's going to be a lot of stuff in the early, early Greeble, uh, just because it's, uh, it's that kind of, you know, that kind of, that kind of episode. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and check in with everybody's favorite Kohai. Senpai! Senpai! Okay, so, it's time for waking the fuck up, Senpai, our regular second pro tips, because I can say that, because is the part of the episodes. It's after the minute marks. Stuff happens. Mm-hmm. It's a long character. Sorry. I'm slightly distracted because I just did a quest that was really, really long, but now I'm switching what mission I'm farming, and I have to completely rebuild my list, because they're monoclass. Mm-hmm. And I'm, like, being really dumb right now, because I'm trying to I'm trying to use my brain to speak, and also to be like, Herb Derb, what's a saber? <laughs> there, that's what, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, so, first off, a pretty casual one. We're just going to remind everybody, even though it's been about a week. But uh, this month's exchange items are lanterns, chains, and fluid. Lanterns, chains, and fluid. I know a lot of people are going to miss the uh, the stakes that we had for two months, but uh, hey, chains are good. Mm-hmm. So that's a positive. And then the other thing is, okay, y'all, uh, we, we need to have a conversation about support setups again. Uh, now, this isn't really super relevant to the Gouda Gouda because uh, it's it's kind of a situation where, you know, we, we've switched to event support setup, which has its own pluses and minuses and stuff. But I came across this issue, quote-unquote, uh, during Hunting Quest, which was very popular, uh, uh, where in particular the thing that got me agita was somebody had a Cast Nero on their caster setup. This was during an Assassin Day. Cast Nero, very good, very strong, powerful caster, um, who has a uh, has a 50% battery skill, which I'm pretty sure was, was fully leveled, because uh, honestly, people on our support setups are usually better about that than we are. But uh, she ha- was holding Kalea Lunchtime, which is a bond CE, and I was just like, mm, no, this is not what you should be doing. Um, so yeah, this is just, I, I would like to ask you, the audience, if you're doing a support setup, think slightly about it before you do it. Don't just unga bunga autopilot, okay? Don't just listen to your friends or look at your list and be like, oh, well, all my caster, my friends with casters have lunchtime on them. Usually your friends do that because they're loaded with, like, Tomamos or Wavers or Merlins or whatever, soon to be Scotties, you know, right? So those are all your support casters. Those guys don't need to do anything. They don't need to hit anybody. They just need to exist. So usually you see lunchtime on them. Um, oh boy, my my comes pretty tightly. Let me like move this up. It's very squeaky. Um, but right, usually you see those on support casters because that's what they're there for. Uh, similarly, you may see Mona Lisa a lot on riders because usually people are using that for door forming for QP. It's pretty typical. Occasionally, you'll see it on, like, casters. Uh, the thing with Cast Nero and with offensive casters, who arguably are probably in better demand than your Merlin, maybe, I don't know, might just be my personal experience, um, is that they're offensive. You need them to do stuff. So, quite frankly, lunchtime on your Cast Nero doesn't help me, especially during hunting quests. Um, and it's, most everybody on my friends list logs in regularly, so it's, it's not like they didn't know what was happening, right? Um, so think about that. Uh, typically, with servants who have 50% batteries that are well-leveled, you're going to want to put a 50% starting NPC on there, which you probably own one of, because they're very popular for events, and there are several that are in the FP gacha. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
similarly with other offensive servants, like, you know, think a little about what you're doing. This, this is like the classic, don't put Black Grail on MASH. That doesn't work. <laughs> that literally does nothing. Um, and other, and other such things. Like, um, you know, K-scopes, especially if you have a super K-scope, you know, fully MLB. Those are pretty good on basically everyone. Um, though it can be a waste on others. Like, uh, for instance, if you're doing that on, like, a Medea or somebody who already has a crazy over 100% battery or whatever, then it's just like, okay, I guess I can back-to-back, but that's not really important right now. Um, but just, just think a little bit about your support setups. Don't autopilot them. This is a pretty basic team comp sort of, you know, understanding. It applies to your support setup, too. And that's just what I wanted to hit up. Uh, oh. So, there is a certain amount of, you know... <laughs> Super Skip Weaver, Black Grail and Weaver, yeah. So, there's a lot of dumb stuff you could do, but uh, I think that was my main point, to just think a little bit about it, okay? I don't know why this one stuck out to me, but it did. I was just like, wow, this is really unhelpful. Um, it reminds me kind of a conversation I had in the comments where I was like, I think it was to farm writers, waves of writers before a boss of a different class, and I was like, yeah, so I'm stuck uh, using good old Skok Assassin here. And they were like, don't, don't, don't be mad at my summer she's on. I'm like, okay, but nothing about what she does. Because uh, they use a specific example of like, she's like a, she's like a George with a heel. And I'm like, okay, her being a uh, George with a heel does nothing for me farming hunting quests, though. That's literally no use to me. It's, it's so, again, it's that kind of thing. Or that's just a me. I like haven't rolled any of the high rarity uh, AoE assassins, of which there are very few. So it's like, what is okay. It? Speaking of the hog, what is this outfit? Hang on. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna post this right here. My head is tilted. <laughs> I, I I believe we're going for some sort of maid theme, but also <laughs> we hmm, hmm. We have many windows in this outfit, as they would say. <laughs> but also, we got like the really deep. Comp- Does it like? I don't. Audience, if you're not watching this live, you're not in the Patreon chat. There's nothing I can tell you about. But it, it's um yeah uh it's good Siv. Devilish made a joke, reverse made. It's like that. It's like a made outfit, but it's got the reverse bunny suit vibes. I'm just like, what am I looking at? Because it's got like f- the full blown thigh and butt window, <laughs> and it's got the boob straps. But also, it looks like her corset goes between them, and she's got bare shoulders, but the little wingus. And I'm like, what? I oh, it is a reverse absolute territory. Uh, s- somebody was very imaginative creating this. God bless artists. You know, got that creativeness. But okay, uh, let's move into Records from the Throne, our regular achievement topic. Um, hmm, hmm. We both kind of have a before and after, so I guess I'll just, I'll just go first since I wrote mine first. Go for it. Uh, I had 15 tickets saved up for this banner because of stuff. Um, I did what I set out to do, and I spent the five extra bonus tickets from the download event on the banner on Mordred Solo Raid Up Day. I got nothing. It's fine. I expect nothing. And get nothing in return. Thanks, Summer. Uh, but for Good to Good to Three, I did spend 15 tickets, and I did get NP3 Ezo out of it, which is pretty good. Solid. Sol- solid attempt on 15 tickets. Well, uh, I'll, I'll let you in on the turn in this story later, but Lucky, please, how did you do on this banner? Uh, so, Lucky did actually, considering, pretty good. I got MP5 Ezo, MP3 Lee, MP2 Altera, and a brand new Clayboy, Inkidu. That yeah. is a hap- That is a happening. That's a good happening. So, uh, so for my twist, I then spent the 150 sync words I had saved up and only got one more Ezo out of it and a full set of CEs. No complaining there. I just have a little bit of complaining. Um, no spooks even, though. Like, I shared some of my rolls. Like, some of these were, like, hard min rolls. Um, and others were just weird. Like, I just got back nothing but, like, two copies of the four-star CE and moved on. And I'm just like, wow, I have not seen a banner this cursed in a while. Now, Lucky also has one. So, all that stuff I, I just told you about, do you know how many um, quartz equivalent I spent for that? I spent 831 quartz for all that. And I did this trying to get me an Okitan. And I did not get, as you may have noticed, get an Okitan. I did get, like, six Emias, though. My Emia, who's already NP5. Um, so, that was great. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very scary banner. Well, and now, now you have another bullet point, which, l- literally, literally, to the audience, you can't see this, but I want to explain to you. Literally, Lucky wrote this down in blue text because that's how we differentiate who wrote what. Um, mm-hmm. so we don't get our stories confused. So there's this block of blue that Lucky's about to read it, read up to you, and then I saw him type it. I literally switched the text over to red and wrote in parentheses at the end. Just what? Yeah. So yesterday I streamed, and someone absolutely destroyed me in my entire career by telling me one little thing. Um, 
This person told me that they're excited for Scotty because they already have 10 USOs ready for her. Now, I have to take a minute to explain this because apparently this is such a fucking freak accent that a lot of people in the stream are going, hey, what are USOs? Oh my god, really? <laughs> yeah, really. Oh shit. Wow, okay. Yeah, Hot there were damn. some people okay. like, hey, who, what's it? So a USO is an unspirit, unregistered spirit origin. In, in Japanese, you may have heard of them. The original term is, I believe, blank Saint Graf. Yeah. In order to get one, you have to summon a five-star servant that you already have MP5 of. Correct. Now, so you don't have to actually that. fuse them to make them MP5, but your when you get your sixth copy of an of an SSR, you get a a, a USO. Now, if you collect ten of these, you can then trade them for any SSR permanent. Or what is available on a current banner. Yes. Which so, which means that if they were easier to get, USOs would be incredibly bullshit, but they're not. They're, they're so not. they're worthless 99% of the time. But here, again, we have a story here of that 1% of someone who, like, I like I asked him, he said um, he spent way too much money, but he did it. But someone literally has a guaranteed Skahawk Scotty coming up this anniversary, and I can't fucking even. I can't fucking even. I think there was only one other person who said they had USOs, and they said they had three. Yeah, I'm flabbergasted. I'm fucking flabbergasted. I I, so, literally, I literally can't have a USO yet. I don't have any... Like, my highest SSRs are NP... No, wait, wait. Time answer is NP3. That's my highest. My singular highest. I have a couple who are NP2. That's it. And uh, I, I didn't get any more Time answers on the banner, so we didn't we didn't go into crazy shock town. Just how many uh, how many um how many uh USOs does Toho Sniper have again? Oh, I don't know. Uh Toronto King should know. A lot. I don't know, does uh Toronto, I mean, does um Toho Sniper like spend a lot on this game? I, I believe know. so, yes. I believe uh Toho is one of the one of the people infamous for big money roll streams. Big money roll streams. I I oh, believe pop, also pop. they are the one who he, he he's one of the one that popularizes the uh the Okay, so he's just a lunatic. They're talking about how he NP5s everybody, which I'm like, okay, that's that's crazy whale town. That's uh that that is why this ge- this game has an anime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Toho Thank you, Snyder, sir, for funding our I anime. Salute, I salute you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, woo, uh, yeah, that's a big one. Um, isn't is Toho also the one who pro- popularized the method of of like burning four stars or uh five stars before a roll for good luck because he's got so much extra. There's a, there's a method to the madness and stuff. I don't I don't know all the okay. Oh, that's Razor. Razor Ninja. All right. There's a there's quite a few big big FGO streamers who I don't really I don't really like to l- watch roll streams because it usually makes me feel bad. Um, o- occasionally I'll watch clips like uh that famous kinetic typography of uh of of uh Quartz and his three Kyo That's that's a that's a move. But uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of rollers who have methods to their madness. But hot damn. Okay. We've uh, oh. we've got a we've got lost on a little bit of woods. Oh man, So Sniper, if you're listening and you want to come and talk about how you are big money spending, feel free. I will love to ask you questions about this. Yes, and if if also hopefully you are willing to answer possibly serious questions about money. <laughs> which we, and to be fair, we've been honest about how much we spend. Yeah, I mean, look, you just literally spent like almost four hundred bucks. But no, over four hundred bucks. No, wait, yeah, no, four hundred bucks. Yeah. Like uh, 90 bucks. So yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, it's a it's it's a not so thing, but it happens sometimes. And I, I obviously we understand people. Of, you know, you were like, oh man, USOs suck. Oh, our gotcha needs to be better. Like I, I'm very interested to see what they'll do for five years. You know, um, because they've already done done a couple of slight skews to the the gotcha system. Mm-hmm. I, I'm very interested to see what what they do. Like we already have pretty regular. We're starting to get pretty regular infusing. They're small, but pretty regular infusions of rare prisms. I'm I'm like. I'm pretty sure they and everybody knows that like USOs are one of the one of the things everybody thinks about that and mats and they've done a lot to improve mat drops. I cannot wait until they backport that system to us where you get um you get guaranteed mats for for main quest clears. Mm-hmm. They're gonna make it rain sink courts and they're gonna make it rain uh make it rain mats. But okay, um now that we have been down that road for about fifteen minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and really quickly cover Did You Finish Your Master Missions? Uh, it's pretty simple. I missed a bullet point there. Doesn't matter. I can read them. It's pretty simple. Hey, I need you to defeat, uh, 15 Saber Archer or Lancer enemies, excluding servants and bosses. I need you to defeat 30 of them after that. Actually, I think it's technically 15 more. 
is the way it works. Uh, and then they do the same to Riders, Casters, Assassins, or Berserkers. 15 and 30, and then complete 5 quests and complete 10 quests. A.K.A. Do the event! It's very simple, y'all. Do the event. So, um, yeah, if you did hunting quests, or you're doing the event at all, because it's mission-based, which means you have to beat up lots of mobs, you are doing your master missions, we hope. We hope. And they're good to you. They get, they're good to you. I I went down to, I think, like, f- 5 or 6 St. Courts, and I'm now back up to, like, 15. No, I'm not spending any singles. I'm barely... I'm arguing with myself if I should spend tickets on this event, because... This banner. Ugh, I'm, done. Shimmy shakes. I'm done. Um, I, might, I, might want, I might want those to see if I can get a Valkyrie or something. Who the fuck knows? Um, let's move into news. There is actually very slightly some news this week, uh, which is that astonishing everyone uh, is that apparently Japan is doing some kind of collab with the Japanese Horse Race Association, including, like, sponsoring a Grand Prix and actually doing, like, a weird little website thing. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Uh, it made me. It gave me f- some traumatic flashbacks because they give you free uh, horseshoe sink quartz. Can I get some of that in the chat by B two Dubs? <laughs> Lucky me, they turned that into an emote just as I wanted, and I need to uh, re-download it so I can tuck them into the thumbnail. <laughs> um, but uh, I they give you some free to start, like every gacha game does, and I rolled and I immediately got like four CES in a row, and I'm just like, mm, no, this is a little too close to my real gacha life. <laughs> And then I think the first one I got was uh, was like Chen Gong or something. I got a Chen Gong as well, and I was like, okay, I'm done. Uh, but they had they had um, new little art styles showing everybody, including red hair is his own jockey. It's pretty funny. And just in in general, it seemed like a, a cute little thing that they put together. And just I'm I'm astonished by FGO's reach, right? Like uh, like they're doing the the under the same sky thing. They did a lot of fun tie-ins. They released some more, you know, balloon Ishtar, Martha on the beach, that kind of stuff. Um, they're still on. They're saying they're still on for the Tokyo Dome event um, in July for the fifth anniversary. They may they may have some methods. Um, I believe the Type Moon Fifteen Years exhibition reopened in Japan recently when they had uh, where they said they had COVID. Uh, protections in place, limiting the number of visitors in space and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I assume that they they are planning to go ahead with the with the big event for number five. But uh, yeah, just apparently the whole FGO was able to just hit up the Japanese Horse Racing Association, um, and I believe possibly actually put on a race with FGO branding. If I'm understanding this correctly, he's <laughs> just like wow, wowzers. They have uh, uh um. <laughs> FGO, we just have money. We're just like, let's spend it on something. What do you want to spend it on? Throw something at a dark board. Land it on horse races? Who put that on the board? Yeah, it's, it's like, a- like we already knew they were kind of, they were kind of pretty good at this, because, like, like, for AX in America, there was, like, last year, there was huge, huge FGO branding. Like, it was on all mm-hmm. the bus wraps and everything. So, like, we know they're not shy, but it's still just... I'm still flabbergasted. I've been flabbergasted well, a lot this episode. Well, let's see. They, they, they do a lot of, like, well, like, Gacha Games seem to do a lot of not direct collabs, because FGO, like, they did they did um collabs with Lawson's. I think they've done two collabs with Yeah, Lawson's. FGO doesn't do in-game collabs, but they do collabs with a lot of brands. Yeah. They've done Kombini and restaurants and stuff, and now the Japanese Horse Racing Association, lots of other things, though. They, they like, they always have, like, um, stuff just ever... Fuck, um... You know, uh, yeah, PSVR, yeah, stuff like that. All kinds of little things. It's very interesting, but we'll see what they do next. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's basically the news. There's uh-huh, uh-huh. as of yet no uh, no release on what is going on next uh, after Requiem. They still got a few days, and uh, oh, for us, we've just started an event, so obviously there's no news as to what comes after. But it will probably be Lost Belt Two pre-release. Just saying. Just saying. It'll probably be Napoleon. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, then, it's time for me to be quieter for a little bit. And uh, Lucky's going to reach into the old mailbag and pull that out. He says he's going to be quiet, but I guarantee you I'm going to get cut off at least twice. Probably. So, <laughs> seat one. Um, so, everyone, uh, first off, I want to apologize. I got the mailbag out uh, late uh, this week. Mostly because most of this week, I, has, I think I mentioned Did I mention this? Uh, I've been roofer Lucky. And... Lucky will say he doesn't necessarily have a fear of heights. He can walk around a two- or three-story roof, no problem. But as soon as he gets to that edge, he gets a little wobbly. Like, I don't know, there's something about my 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 brain going, hey, this is how many ways you can die. Just kind of kind of puts me in a man. It's like, Lucky's not afraid of flying. 
Lucky's not scared of being on top of tall buildings, but you put me near an edge. Lucky's like, nope, 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 nope. Where's my safety harness? So, in coping mechanisms, as soon as he got home, he usually uh, just started playing something to completely blot the thing from his mind and forgot to put up the mailbag. So, we only had a few days for this. Um, so, uh, if you guys missed your chance, I apologize. But don't worry, mailbag will be going on weekly because it seems that people like this segment. And as long as people like it, Lucky's going to keep doing it. Yeah, you say it was it was late and had shorter time. There's still 27 of these, like just yeah. 27 comments. Mm-hmm. So as usual, our Let's Talk FGO Mailbag is a segment where I read out loud live letters from you, the community. Um, I said we just have a couple guidelines. One, you must have an alias because I want to see what you people come up with. And two, it can't be completely long long winded or completely off topic. It can be a little off topic. I don't mind a little off topic. Like last week talking about force of will, I love that. That made me. That made me. I had a good time with that. Oh, yeah, that. That turned into a whole thing. Yeah. So, we're gonna get started with this first one from the Keeper of Time. <laughs> By the way, um, the Keeper of Time is Rogue Robin, the person who does our time codes every week. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You do it so I don't have to. Though I do I do want to say, before we get to their actual question, this is funny. Robin gave themselves a, a title, but when... For last week's episode, which was a motherfucker of a ramble zone, that was the three-hour episode we did for twenty five hundred subs. Um, I I included a funny little title note, and Rob was like, "Please don't inf- inflate me anymore." And I'm like, "Okay, okay." So the keeper of time asked, "Since it's a question that always comes up in the Discord, it might as well be asked here. What class do you guys plan on rolling for this GSSR, and which one will you avoid like the plague?" P.S. Hi. Ah. Uh, Lucky doesn't actually know. How does uh, this? Pull how does this? Pull it up. Yeah. How does? Yeah. How does this uh, year's uh, this anniversary's GSSR works? Is uh, it? It is the fully class based, but extra gets to be its own slot for once. And this includes all. This includes limiteds, right? Yes. Mm. So it's like Pikachu Fez three second anniversary. Do I still have that image? I think I. I think I. I think I have my. Do I still have my edit? Hang on, I gotta check. I definitely don't have my edits. I literally just clip them out of. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, I do. I do have my edits still. All right, cool. Uh, all right, for the people in the live show, I'm cropping. Let me let me copy paste mine here. Oh wait, shit! No, this one needs to be edited. I need to fucking remove. Wow, I'm shook. I'm shook at myself right now. I just realized. Uh, do I want to just fix this real quick? I can't. I can't. Hang on. Let me just open it up and clip. So, uh, yeah, I've I've cropped the naked one to the live audience. Um. So for me, I'm not going to do the whole re-edit thing for people because I do this all the time. I'm actually kind of surprised I got this question because every time it comes up, I usually post the thing again. But I guess people <laughs> were talking about it again. People talk a lot in Discord. And some sometimes we're watching. Other times, sometimes. not so much. Um, So let's see. Casters is a pretty... I think the one I'm going to avoid for sure has got to be probably caster or writer because um, I've got a pretty decent... Well, even maybe not writer. Writer, I'm writer. I've only got the, like the last three, so uh, definitely caster because I have a couple, couple of big ones in there already. Uh, da Vinci, Merlin, Waver, and two Stacys. Yeah. Um, and out of assassin, which ones do I have? Uh, just Gramps and Jack. Ooh, dare I risk assassin? Ah! I don't know. Um, Sorry, let me just close off I could. So for me, the choice is: is it's either gonna be it's gonna be saber or assassin? Um, because while I have less assassins, they're also there's, you know, still decent risk of getting something I don't need out of it. Um, the decent spread of them are AOE. So it's really just like one of my preferences. I'm going to have to give extra, I think, a skip, even though I still want that Sherlock Holmes. Um, I already have, like, a ruler and Avenger. Um, I do have Melt already, and I have both foreigners. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. I really, I don't know if I really want uh, somebody. I posted that in the wrong fucking channel. Rip. Sorry. Nope, I'm not going to let you get it, card. I'm not going to let you get a card. Nope. Riparino. Hang on. No, I'm fine. I don't need Kiara. Uh, hang on, I gotta yell at people. <laughs> I liked your first version more. <laughs> um, but for um, Sabres, I also only have two of those, and they are literally both AoE. So, I don't know. I think I might just go Saber just because I have a wider strike zone of getting getting something I want, and I would be less mad about dupes than I would up in uh, Assassins. Okay, there we go. Now I posted. Right so I place. think that's what I'm going for. Is I'm gonna have to give extra a pass and definitely give Caster a pass. Um, all the others I'm fairly evenly distributed, so I think it's just gonna be Sabers just cause. So for you, lucky, I, 
Lucky posted his, and he realizes he has a media problem. In all of them, I have over half the SSR. So no matter what I'm doing, it's minimum 50-50 shot that I'm going to get someone I already have. Yeah. It kills me. It kills me most on um, Lancers, though, because the Lancer I want the most, Karna, is the one that I do not have. Out of seven, Karna is the only one I don't have. I'm just all like, why you do this to me? You're pretty similarly fucked on uh, Casters, too. Yeah, because um, I wouldn't be upset if I got a Stacy, but I want that Da Vinci. Now, let's see. How many casters are there? What? But there's a lot of fucking casters, though. Yeah, there's a lot of fucking casters. So, let me hear. Uh, that's nine? Nine casters? Yeah, I have seven out of nine casters. One is the Vinci, who I've been trying to get since the anniversary one, and it's just like, nope, not happening. Not happening. Luckily, Da Vinci should have another couple of re-ups. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I yawn. A little sleepy. Um, honestly, it looks like... A lot of as people a- are saying Berserker to you. Um, one, are you going to roll at all, like, even tickets on Napoleon? Probably, I can't remember, does, does Napoleon, is the Napoleon rate up also the Valkyrie rate up? No, it is just Napoleon. Fuck you. No, basically. no. Yeah, honestly, so you're better, you're better probably, because I'm sure that if you want an old man, well, guess what, he's coming back next year for White Day, it's his own mm-hmm. event, mm-hmm. Um, you are probably best yes at, at Berserker then, because that has your, that's got some fun guys in there, that's got a Golden, that's got Achen, um, but, uh. There's definitely, definitely seen some danger. You could also do, you could also risk a writer. You don't have four of those. Achilles yeah, is cool, one. and Iskander is cool, and it's got that Lucha Nechan in there. I do want me a Lucha Nechan, but I don't know. See, like, um, Lucky's Desires, he wants an Okitan, or maybe a Dantes. So extra is still viable, but let's see, there's what, 10 in there? Yeah. The, I have se- Extra's I have a big out, lump. I have like, 7 how- out of 10 there. Okay. So that's, mm, that's big. Mm. Yeah, I was gonna say, how upset are you gonna be if you get, if you get like NP two Amakusa or Jean or something, right? Like, well, if I get, if I, well, if I get a Jean, that's gonna be my first USO, and I think I'd actually be pretty fucking mad. Yeah, so it's like, mm, that's a big, that's a big danger zone. That's a big danger zone. Like author, like I'm, I'm literally just gonna go through the list of who I have left. Like, I wouldn't mind an author or Arthur or a Sigur, but if I was to roll Sabres, my big one would be an Okita. But let's see here. I have, there is, I have six out of nine Sabres there, so that's literally, it's a 33 within 33% chance. What What is that? So, like, I would have a 33% chance to roll one I didn't have, and among those, it's only a 33% chance to roll Okita. That's, that's a big, that's some big math brain that I don't want to fucking deal with. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Archers, I'm just not going to do. Lancers, I'm not going to do. Assassins, I'm not gonna do. So yeah, it's probably gonna be. I have to. I have to search my soul and decide between berserkers, extras, or um, or probably uh, riders. Yeah, because you've got four open slots on archer, mm-hmm. and not that there's anything wrong with. Interestingly, the back half of the list, which is Gil Moriarty, Napoleon, Tesla, mm-hmm. but at the same time, other than maybe Moriarty, I don't think you've expressed any particular great affection for any of these big burly men's. No. So listen, Dandy Man is cool, but he will have his own rate ups. Yep. So uh And I gotta uh, be yeah. honest, even if like maybe maybe if I didn't get my Aresh, I would think about Lancer, but I don't think I can ever roll anything Lancer focused ever again in my life, just because it's too spicy. I too don't spicy. want that I don't want that fourth Tama Lancer. <laughs> that would be especially on a GSSR, that would be a bad time. That would be <laughs> some kicking and screaming. Like, yeah, so I'm probably like if I if I got NP2 Mordred or even NP2 Altera, I would be like, I'll take my lumps. So Lucky, like Lucky is gonna say he's probably either going to um, risk it with the extra class or play it safe with Berserker. I, and also for for Omega's input, because I'm sure people may have thought about it. The reason why I'm not going for Berserker is while there are some units I would still like on there, I did recently get both Raiko and Kentoki, so I'm pretty pretty cruise control in both primary roles for Berserker. Like, Nightingale's cool, Etchan's cool, but, you know, I could get a, I mean, I guess Vlad's fun, right? But I don't really need him, you know? Or I could, I mean, you know, get, like, Kijikata or Ku, Ku in there, and I'd be like, mm, you're neat, but you're not a nurse, though. That's that's always the danger zone with the GSSR, <laughs> right? It's like, okay, I really want, like, one thing on this list. And then, then if, you re- if you really only want one, it's almost not worth rolling, right? Yeah. Uh, this is yeah, a lot so more I- interesting because I think the next couple of these, or the most recent couple of these, are just the limiteds, which gets extra spicy. So, 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 um, we're going to move on. Thank you, Keeper of Time. Time, time. For your letter. We're going to move on. So, next one. 
comes from Star Knight. I feel very 80s right now. So, hello guys, a big fan since the beginning. Quick question, which servant you ex- did you not expect to like so much or dislike or not feel much or anything after seeing them in story? So I can actually say my two really fucking easy. So back in Camelot, oh boy, Camelot, seeing um Tristan and Gawain um, kind of uh, ruffled my feathers, kind of set me on edge. And until we got the CCC event, like, I just did not like them. I was yeah, like, FGO boy. is, F- I think, honestly, actually, all fate has this problem where, but FGO is especially weird where it's like, oh, you're either gonna hate this character because we've completely done something fucky with their character design, or mm-hmm. we're gonna love them because we're gonna pull in a VK brawn and we're gonna completely unfuck their character. Yeah. So, yeah, for a while, I was like, I just not like, I did not like going interest. Funnily enough, I came to fucking adore Cursed Arm. I was like, oh no, this man, he's just your cool uncle. How dare? He gave me a fucking throw rug or a throw pillow thing. I love his little, his little gift thing. It's great. I, I know. I was like, this guy, this guy. Uh, I think those are the big ones for me. Because, like, Cursed Arm, like, you only ever really, like, before Fate, his only really reaction was, you know, Heaven's Feel and whatnot. And boy, howdy, in that movie, you do not get cool uncle vibes from him at all. Well, yeah, I know. I think that, I think that's. Like I said, that's why he's written that way in, like, Camelot and stuff. It's because, oh, we didn't explore his character at all in Heaven's Feel. He's just no. a spooky skelly man. Um, Zabania. Whereas, like, say, Tristan is like, oh, here's a brand new character. Let's literally make his character the reverse of himself. Because <laughs> themes. And I just want to be like, you know, it's one of those moments where you just want to, like, gently grab Nasu by the side of his weird mushroom face and be like, why, though? <laughs> Because a, a lot of people are super spicy about Tristan, and may still be, despite the fact that literally playable Tristan is the exact opposite of that guy. Oh, no, and, like, honestly, once you get, once you see, like, literally, what saved Tristan for me wasn't necessarily CCC, although he did get some good time in that. It was fucking Halloween um 2, with him and his shenanigans with Cleopatra. Like, him, like, that's where you get, like, a lot of his memes. It's like, oh, I can fly, and he can play his harp. Upside down, one-handed. What the fuck? And, like, I said, his Valentine's a CD of Tristan's greatest hits. I'm just like, oh my god. But no, for like, a solid like, what was it like? How how, how long was it between, um, oh, Valentine, uh, Camelot and the Valentine's? Between Camelot? It's probably like a solid, solid half a year. Yeah. Look, he wasn't having none. Mm. It was great. What about you, Omega? So, let's see, let's see. Um, so generally we've talked about this. I think usually we don't necessarily we don't necessarily have impressions of these characters super before we meet them. Yeah. Um so I think the only the only really interesting ones is um so to me speaking of CCC um CCC did a great job of selling me on Melt. Um uh, uh, yeah. Because I got to be honest, um I don't really go for the whole the whole sadism thing, right? Like, I, I get the danger waifu vibes and stuff, but that's not me. That It ain't me. Um, so, mostly what I understood about Melt from her character and, like, some of her designs and stuff would be like, eh, she's, she's kind of sun and seems kind of fun, but then CCC really, really goes all out on, like, explaining her character and kind of where she's coming from and also gives her an opportunity to mature from how she was in the actual CCC game, right? The Seraph event yeah. is even furthermore from that. So that was kind of like just a thing where I was just like, oh, well, all right, that's that's actually a pleasant surprise. I think Melt's a lot of fun, actually. And then I got her on the, the roll thing. I should order that Melt Mentroid. That is a new one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm trying to think. Are there any characters I I unexpectedly disliked? I don't, I, I don't think so. I don't think there are any characters who, like, I developed strong dislike feelings from over time. Like, Almost all the characters I don't like in Fate are characters I already didn't like and, like, kept not liking. Like, mm-hmm. o- Omega is not usually subtle about the fact that, uh, hey, guess what? I don't like Caster Gills. He's not a nice guy. Mm-hmm. I I understand why you make the the cool jokes, but I'm like, no, he murders children. Into the trash can he goes. Um, I am not unsubtle in the fact that I'm still not super keen on Kiara. She's kind of an evil messiah, guys. Yeah. Um, this is This is the thing Lucky and I joke about how... I, I'm probably very chaotic, but I'm still definitely good in there somewhere. Whereas Lucky's just like, nah, dude, I'm evil. I'll be evil. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, there are still some things that that that, that kind of stretch at me. I'm just like, um, 
I don't know. Maybe maybe another unexpected like was I really like what they did with Caskill because I'm not. I oh, I'm one of those yeah, people that, who's like, yeah. no, Archer Gill is an asshole. He's yeah. did you forget that he's the he's like the single through line antagonist through most of Fate, you know, the original Fate story and also with Fate Zero kind of like he, he's kind of a dick bag. But other people were, you know, they kind of do different thing, um, you know, to like uh, do that sort of thing. We're like in CCC, but I haven't played that because it's not in English. So it's hard. Uh, I'm trying to think like even I liked most of the characters from Extella. No, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think there are a lot of characters who I didn't not like. Well, if we're talking about Extella, like I'll definitely say say if we had so, if we're talking about a server who gave me a meh reaction, that was definitely Altera. Like, um, I can't remember. Did we did we play Extella before FGO came out? Yeah, because it came out over here before FGO came out. Okay, yeah. So when I was playing Extella, when I was like. Like, I know, like, N- like Nero and Tom O'Dur are like, they are explosive personalities. And then you're meeting Altera, it's like, who is this robot? Yeah, Altera's interesting, but then you get to meet Titan Altera, who's very... And then you're like, oh no, she's adorable. And- but yeah, so for the... We talked about this with the Inazioverse. The way it was in JP, it happened the other way around, was um, FGO came out, like, a year before Extella actually came out. But I think... I think we've talked enough about that. So, Star Knight! Thank you very much for your letter. Uh, on to the next one. This is from Card. Um, hello, Lucky Omega. No fake house this time. What servant would you like to see have an alter version? Signed, the newest member of the Sakamoto Detective Agency. Card. Omega, do you have your? Do you have a quick answer? I have a quick answer. But I want to see if you have a quick answer. Mm, quick answer. Um, honestly, I think the most the the most concepts which spring out are ones that technically probably already kind of exist. Like um uh like we've gotten that. That fake Dark Mary art, but also going way back to Orleans, Mary literally says that if it was a, if it was her, she would think that that's a real version of her. So I've always been thought, like, man, they should pull the trigger on that one. Mm-hmm. But other than uh, that, I don't... Is there any explicit? No, I don't think so. Uh, Lucky has uh, said this before. He would like to see a Drake altar as a caster with her magic mirror that, you know, lets you, that summon storms that are spying people. Shit like that. Um, I don't think I have any other quick ones off the top of my head. So yeah, that's, well, okay, that's another thing that's not that's not not new. They did technically do I I guess they were aiming for Medusa Alter in the FGO OVA as a lancer, like an adult lancer. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be interesting to see that design, but that's really they that character doesn't actually do it. Like I don't think in fiction that character does anything that's really different than like say Anna or Gorgon or anything. So like I don't know if Medusa is interesting that. in the fact that she has multiple versions that aren't actually an alter. No, because they're not altered. They are just her at different points of her life, which is another... Yeah. That's another... In, like, honestly, if you were to ask me about, like, lilies or different different points of their life, there's definitely a lot of different characters I'd love to see more of. But I don't... I'm trying to think, like, alters I'd really want to... I don't think there's any major alters I'd really want to go for. Oh, um... <laughs> it's not technically... I guess it's an alter, but uh, give me a Lancer Autorio Summer alter. That'd be great. That is technically an alter. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> thank you for your co- letter card. <laughs> so this one made me laugh. So this one comes from Zenry, and they ask, when do you think t- FGO will run out of Type Moon and have to rely on an outside IP for a collab? <laughs> and which IPs would you like to see them collab with? Realistically, not Sue would choose a work written by one of those friends, but we have the chance to vote on it. What would you vote for? So Zenry, were you listening to last week's episode? Yeah. So the first, the first part of this question is they're not going to run out, though. Is the thing like, oh my god, there's so much, especially considering they still haven't done like, like I guess Karno Kyoka counts as one of the things that made Type Moon famous. But that's like that's what kind of Nasu did as his first thing. But those were still on web novel until like oh four. So they still have not done a direct tie in to Fate Stay Night, and they still have not done a direct tie in to Sukihime. Um, like. And then there's so many more things. No, I think they got a lot of Type Moon stuff that they can burn through that still counts before they even get too external. That said, like, I think the what other properties, if they were like a, like Grand Blue does this a lot, I believe, where they, they get other mediums. If they did that, I don't know. There's a lot of really interesting things. Um, honestly, I, I don't know. Other than just maybe some animes that, uh, that Nasu might like that could be fun, I'd think, uh, like Persona would be a fun one. That could be a good one. And, uh, let's see, what else? Lucky, you got any that kind of jump out? I'm trying to, like I said, like, Lucky is going through his fucking library of anime in his head going, what, what is something that Lucky loves would also make a good collab? Hmm. Yeah, or, like, games, like, fuck, I'd love to see what Nasi would do with, like, a Bloodborne collab. 
oh, that'd be terrifying. But it would fit in somehow, right? Somehow. You know, there, there's there's probably a lot of major game series and stuff that, that would work and could, could fit in. Well, I mean, I'll ask the audience. Do you guys have any stuff? Leave in the comments. Lucky's got to come up with some sort of answer here, so give him a second. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll vamp with Lucky Muses, because, mm-hmm. I mean, so obviously there's real life, like, brands and stuff, uh, which FG already does, but doesn't do in-game. I think they kind of... And then I think Nasu has even said that the reason why they try to keep two Tight Moon collabs is because they want all the stuff to kind of make sense in the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it would be funny if they did other gacha game crossovers, which could be amusing. Uh, like, I think somebody's got, like, uh, I see somebody on my friends list who has a... Their friends list note is um, Archer XSI Wen. <laughs> you know, um, so you could do some some interesting kind of combos with that or with other stuff that they do card games and whatnot um there's all kinds of you know weird stuff like like we said like um freaking uh ubisoft is partnering up with uh with girls frontline and and arc knights and stuff um you know um there's probably some classic like movies or other things that nasu likes that he could do but also a lot of those are public domain characters they could just pull from it's interesting you know that's always the weird thing about fate is i don't i don't i don't think of fate as like a lot of media collabs except classic media like like it's not really a collab if nasu does actual characters from like dracula right Mm -hmm. but oh you know who i want to fucking collab with i want to fucking collab with valkyria chronicles Give me a fucking SSR Savaria Bless. Get that could be fun. That would work. Get the get the right man in there. You'd do it. You'd do it. Would. He would. Um, I guess an well, I mean, I guess the fun stuff is um, cause it, uh, um, Delightworks and stuff is all part partner with Sony ultimately, isn't it? So that could be that could be fun to see some Sony brands in there, some Sony p- profiles. Um, whether that's like like Spider Man, <laughs> put Japanese Spider Man in there. Um, Spider Man. You know, um, fuck, get get Mr. Koj- Kojima in on this. You know, I think I don't think we can Ooh. do Solid Snake, but uh, but like uh, Death Stranding shit in there that could be weird and, and cool. I don't know. Fuck it, go Zone of Enders. Let's put Mechs in. That would also be pretty funny. Um, you know, especially if God forbid, I don't think I think we lost those rumors and all the stuff going on. But that was a rumor earlier this year that Sony was actually looking to 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 basically buy buy off Kojima's old properties from Konami. Actually. Um, yeah. I don't think that went anywhere, but that would be that. Would, you could do some interesting stuff with a lot of that. There's a lot of collective stuff to do. Somebody mentioned Godzilla. I don't know if that would work size wise though. Castlevania could be very interesting. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. There's a there's a lot of I think interesting options, but mostly I would like the really I would like the really like popular stuff. I like you know, like I said, like a Persona, and you could do crossovers with their gacha games. That'd be funny. Um. Oh, sorry. I actually did some quick research, and apparently Konami actually did release a statement saying, well, I'll just read out the statement real quick. I know this is but people want to know. We are aware of all the rumors and reports, but can't confirm they are not true. I know it's not the answers your fans may want to hear. It's not to say we aren't completely closing the door on the franchise, just not in the way that is being reported. So they're doing something, but... So, so they're, op- they're open to stuff, and maybe they're doing a partnership, but they're not like, we're not literally selling it. No. We can still make money off of this. Somehow. We can still make pachinko machines. Yeah. Or we could turn it into Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> Children's card games. Anyway. Anyway. That would be by B J Dubs, that would be a that'd be that would make no goddamn <laughs> sense because I don't I don't think Yu-Gi-Oh is that popular anymore, but that that would be a crazy <laughs> one. Uh no, clearly we need a um Ghost in the Shell collab. That would also be a weird one. It would be a weird one. But yeah, give me a give me SSR caster dark magician. It works. Things work. It's funny. Anyway. Uh <sighs> <laughs> so, Zenry, thank you very much for your your letter. We're going to move on to Nero, who asks, What's one fate figure you pick up that you think is just amazing? I've been considering the Summer uh, summer Saber Fran. She looks amazing. Look, he hasn't really been looking at figures recently because they cost money. Correct. Ah, but look, he's like, always on the lookout for more Tomomo figures. He wants a couple. He has a list, literally, of just fate figures. He's like, no, that's good. That's good shit. Yeah, uh, I have a I have a list of figures I might like to buy, but I have never bought any. Unfortunately, not all of them are hecking um um fate though. Like you know, Lucky was talking about uh Valkyria Chronicles uh earlier. Here, let me just post this. There's a one. lot of those. Let me just post that. You can all take a look at that if you want. And let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. But there is an FGO one. I only have like one real FGO one that's on my list, and it's like I keep going. Um, I keep going, um, the Lightworks, where is this costume? 
This is a good well, figure, but also I after mailbag I might in free talk I might tell this the, the story about me and Amiami. But uh that's uh mm-hmm. that's a that's a spicy figure, but that is also some spicy numbers. Yeah, yeah it is. And then um so the one I I guess the FGO one that I'm looking at right now is I'm always looking for Tomo, but there's one that I've really wanted. It's a Fate Stella um Altera Sweet Devil, which is literally a short haired fucking succubus Altera, and you're just like, Why is this not in game? Can we can we have can we have a Halloween event with this give, please? No, don't give me a restraining order. How dare. But yeah, so those are my thoughts on that. Did I say what did I say what the figure was so other people can go look it up? Yeah. Okay, good. You like I can't about. remember. Like honestly, the figure, the probably the number one figure that that Omega would probably go for. I can actually look at what's on my Amazon wish list right now. I have, like I said, I have, I do have a specific list for this. Uh, but probably the uh, the most interested me would probably be um they've got a couple of uh of interesting uh portrait figurines. Mm-hmm. Like some of those might be nice to have a little a little mo. Uh, and that's probably like my primary what I go for. Mm. Like mm-hmm. I don't know, I haven't seen any. Well, actually, I have seen some Ishtar, like, statuettes and figurines, but usually they're super detailed and really fucking expensive. And, like, here's the thing. Omega loves waifus, loves all that stuff, loves little things, you know, the little plushes or whatever are cute, all that stuff. But he has always been delicate about his spending, so if you show him a large price tag, he will immediately go, this is... This doesn't bring me enough joy just by existing to make it worth spending that much money, you know? Like, honestly, that's probably why I don't buy more snacks for myself, because I look at myself and go, gosh, I really want some Skittles. But, like, a vending machine? A couple dollars for a bag of Skittles? Fine. Order, like, a shitload of Skittles on Amazon? That's way too much money. That's not worth it. The Skittles will be gone in, like, five seconds. So, I yeah. I'll, that's a that's a concern for Omega a lot of the time, is a lot of the really, really good shit I'm like, I'm never, like... Maybe when I'm a millionaire, when my YouTube millions finally come in. But otherwise, I'm like, mm. I said, when we become YouTube millionaires, we're going to have the dedicated Figma room with Dakimakura's where we can just relax and be all like, yes, this heals me. Yeah. All right. So on to the next one. Thank you very much, Nero. So this one from that guy who types too much. And they ask, have you ever read a fanfic? If so, what's your favorite one? Also, from my last question, what god or being would you think or want to possess you as a pseudo servant? Sorry about last time. It's okay. It's not a big deal. It's not it's okay. Uh, real talk, if if I was going to say an actual god, divine being to possess me, it'd probably be Hephaestus. Hephaestus is baller. He's like, just give me like a sweet AM patch. Just give me like a sweet arm patch. Eye patch. You know, maybe fuck up on my arms. But uh, I'm pretty sure this man has item creation, like divine. He, make- he, he, he did make a lot of the coolest shit. Mm-hmm. Literally made Zeus's Thunderbolts. Literally. So important that whenever he got pissed off, everyone's all like, yo, someone go get Hephaestus. Someone go apologize to that man. Literally got married to Aphrodite. And when uh, when he, he caught cheating, literally used made a net that could hold two gods, one being the fucking god of war, and drag them around. Nah, this, the boy's Bala. He fucking right. Bala. Which wasn't yo. so much just a complaint, but just to be like, hey, I know what's up. Yeah. Uh, oh, and to answer Tactic question in the chat, uh... Which Ducky Macros? Uh, clearly the L-shaped centaur one, just because it's hilarious. I would like that one, and if we're also gonna get hilarious Ducky Macros, I want to get the fucking Mia one that's like a mile fucking long. Yeah, the snake one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, I like the centaur one because there's like a there's like instructions on how you can do it. One of which is use it as a pillow while the guy's sitting back holding like a glass of wine. Like, <laughs> no, Mister Bond, I expect you to be comfy. I'm like, this is perfect. I, I want to own this just so I can recreate this picture. <laughs> Here at Studio Mega, we love Monster Girls, and we like we like sassy slash ironic things. Oh, man. So, yeah, I would like to go, like, knee-jerk reaction, um, Hephaestus. I think he'd be pretty baller. I think he needs to work on a thumbnail, but now he's gonna look up fucking Monster Girl pics to post in chat. Uh, but also, there was a question about Fate Fan 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 too. Uh, Lucky does not read fanfics, sorry. No, not really. I don't do that. No, no. I should. All right. So let's see here. So a uh, guy who types too much. Thank you very much for your letter. And now we're going to move on to from Siderant. Things have calmed down, but now I'm bound to change to make sure that Kyo ain't mad. Fair. Fair. Hey, yo. Lucky and Omega. How's it going? You don't get three square meals a day? No. So I was wondering what exactly dictates a servant class in a Grail War. Is it primarily just their lore in an open spot? Or could how their master summons them affect their class? P.S. If you think you can make that a Teach Me Omega Sensei topic, then I can wait for the answer there. Thanks for all the fun. So I'm going talk- to go ahead and go in there. We've already done that topic. It definitely exists. Yeah, it definitely exists. 
But um, the answer is both. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those full blown yes, yes. Um, like I said, usually um, someone's whatever's lore or particular famous happens in Alec, it affects their class. We King Arthur's Excalibur, um, Lancer's um, Gay Bulg. But there are some things that masters can do to affect it. Re fucking um, well actually, uh, re um, Berserker Lancelot and uh, Fate Z- and uh, Fate Zero. Yes, specifically, you can you can choose to impose madness enhancement to get a Berserker if they can qualify, and you can do different kind of stuff about the summonings, like maybe what catalyst you use might pull them, or what what classes they can qualify for, like um, mm-hmm. uh, like how uh. Rama deliberately tries to frame himself as a saber so he can get summoned mm-hmm. and still have the archer slot open. Uh, but that is kind of, you know... DW gives Sita. Yeah. Could have, could have really shocked that way didn't come up. Sorry, I'm not bored by this conversation. I'm just really yawning. Though we have been going for over an hour. Sorry. All right. Uh, Let's see here. So, uh, so Derek, thank you very much. We're going to accelerate a little bit. I don't know. We don't really have that much on the back half, do we? No, it's mostly just going to be our impressions about stuff and things. Okay. So, thank you very much for your letter. Going on to the next one, from Kilian Hooligan. Points if you know where this is from. Fuck, you got to know points. Okay, so this one confused me a little bit. So, if the Sherlock is a foreigner in disguise theory is true, I mean, it like immediately goes, what, what? Would it be cool if we get a Moriarty altar the moment Sherlock goes crazy with space energy and desires the real, real truth of the world? What? I, no. I just, I don't, <laughs> I, I, Omega does not, Omega refuses to deal with such questions. It would go full circle with Doyle's intention to have Moriarty to be the one to stop Sherlock. So if Sherlock ever went crazy, only like someone like Watson Moriarty is qualified <sighs> to confront him. And at the icing of this cake, not only would this be Moriarty be genuinely good, but also he'd be an alter ego Mar- Moriarty breed upon the specific conditions and alter egos are we know body okay, foreigners. I feel, I feel like this letter falls into the I was way too many words category. It was very, very specific. It is very specific. But as I said, like, like he's confused, like, honestly, like, I think that, like, Personally, looking at this, it's too much effort to go that far. Yeah, honestly, that's usually how I feel about these theories. Is like, okay, so in, in case you haven't heard of this, lucky you're the audience. There's there is a running crackpot theory that Sherlock is secretly a foreigner because the foreigner class card art looks kind of like him with all of his arms and stuff and his mm-hmm. cloak. I don't know. I feel like it's region. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and because he is a servant who fucks around between singularities and stuff, that yeah. but other characters do that too. So yeah, I don't like, fucking I don't think it's a big deal. Um, uh, is Edmund that way too? Yeah, Edmund just comes fucking everywhere. He's like, I'm here. I'm in your dreams. Don, yeah, I'm in the singularity. In dreams because he's like, fuck you, time and space. <laughs> um, and that the thing about Sherlock is that he does have an anti world NP. Like his ability to determine the truth is crazy good. Um. Mm-hmm. So, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily buy the theory, but a lot of people like it. Um, mm. Like, the, honestly, I I don't like to theorycraft too much for Nasu, because it's just, it's gonna bring up something from like 10 years ago, nobody remembers, and be like, it was this the whole time, and I'm just gonna be like, I'm no! Because um, that's just how that ha- keeps happening. It keeps happening. So many Hail Marys that actually proc. Like, Nasu throws out throws out a long ball, and everybody's like, that ball's never gonna land, and then here we are in FGO, literally ten years later, and it's like, oh shit, that ball landed. Um, Actually, it's more like, whack! Oh shit, we just got hit with a ball. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I've, oh no, I've been hit with a hit with a, uh, a ball. And on that ball is written, haha, you never thought this come up. So, like, I don't know, like, yes, technically that could be the long play, but also I, I feel like that's too, uh, like I said, it's We've got some some weirdness um, where like sometimes Nasu is like, oh no, that's that's not even subtle at all. It's super obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, but then other times it's like, oh, you never would have pieced that together because it literally didn't mean anything to you until just now, right? So it's mm-hmm. like I don't know. Um, and then then to take a theory that is a y- you know crazy theory going on and then be like, wait, I've got a double theory. I'm like, I don't fucking know. I don't know what they're gonna do. And and honestly, I- I've said this before. I don't. I don't like to engage with people in pet theories because people generally with their pet theories are like, this is my pet theory. I refuse to change it or let it go. And I'm just like, okay, so there's no discussion here. Yeah. Like, good on you, sir or madam. You came up with a really long scenario that you came up with believable logic for it. I have nothing to input on this conversation because I feel like the always, no matter what I say, your response would be, but what if though? And I'm like, okay. So uh, it's a neat idea, but eh, we'll see what happens. Like I said, like honestly, look. Um, also, Lucky doesn't feel like he needs a Moriarty altar. I think Moriarty, like a re- regular Moriarty, would try to fucking stop Holmes, regardless, because it's fucking Holmes and he's Moriarty. 
So, um, but I said that did spark a discussion. So, thank you very much, Killian Hooligan, for your letter. So, I'm not going to think too hard about this one. I'm going to make it go real quick. So, this is from Merkava, Maine. Following a study in long sweetening, it is determined that the average European swallow beats its mean as a minimum of seven times per second to main flight, maintain flight. Plugging that number into a straw hall equation, we can determine that the average velocity of unladen European swallows is approximately 11 meters per second, or 24 miles per hour. With this in mind, what is your favorite color? Purple. Red. Thank you very much for your letter, Merkava, Maine. Moving on to Emblem. I'll try to think of something better in the future, Law. You don't have to. You do you, girl. The question I have is related to a problem that I presently have. You see, I'm working on a Holy Grail fan fiction. That will be a doujinshi eventually. And big girl. And I have to come up with a new server from scratch. How does one go about doing that process? I could answer that, but Omega, do you have any particular... Okay, um, so, uh, hey, the third episode of the Fate Homebrew came out. It continues to contain much faffing. Uh, Omega yes. literally does this all the time. Honestly, just, you just... Like, usually what happens is I get a weird idea. Like, um... Well, I'll walk through one idea that I had recently, which was I worked on writer Jacques Cousteau, the famous diver and oceanographer. Um, it, I was inspired to do this purely because of the song Holy Diver by Dio, <laughs> which I heard for the first time in my life. I'm pretty sure when Lucky recommended it as a song never... for a... No, I don't wow. think I've ever heard it, actually. If I wow. did, I wasn't paying attention. Wow. It happens with a lot of music. There's a lot of music that just exists. So I guess that's, that's fair, but... I'll... I'm sorry, Holy Divers is real iconic to me. Uh, Well, yeah, it's really great. I've been listening to it nonstop since then, and it'll occasionally burst out of the song, which I will not right now, because (laughs) the YouTube spiders are really good at that. But um, I was like, can I make a diver servant? And I'm like, I can make Jacques Cousteau. And then I just ran with it. And usually what I do is I try to look at similar servants and what they do to kind of like, one, because you don't want to like, you don't want to do the kind of Mary Sue, like, oh, well, my my OC is obviously the best at all this stuff kind of thing, right? Like, you want to be careful about that, just so you don't come off as hacky or anything. Mm-hmm. But um, I compare to similar servants, and honestly, all of this shit is made up, so you just come up with whatever feels right. And then that's, you know, you decide the appropriate skills. There is actually some guidelines on, like, you know, oh, well, what's a class skill for this class or that class or whatever, so... Uh, and you just build from there, and then you decide, like, I usually, for, for real people or fictional characters, I do a little bit of research into what their actual anecdotes and, and history or legend or whatever is, and then that's how you get skills and noble phantasms. So, uh, I think, let's see, um, I'm not looking at it right now, and I could look it up, but I think off the top of my head, Custo has a variant of the mechanized armor skill that Babbage has for reasons. When I actually had to stab Babbage first to get a feel for him. Um, he's got Voyager of the Storm because he was a Navy lieutenant. He was a Navy diver. And then, uh, God bless learning with manga. Where are those servants, BT dubs? They have full stack lines and everything. Um, uh, learning with manga writer is a film director also. So uh, they had skills that were based around directing. So um, I gave uh, Cousteau one of those. And then for his Noble Phantasm, one is that he has a dive suit, Aqualung, because he helped develop it, and divers and stuff. <laughs> so he's got a spooky Big Daddy suit. And the other is um, named after his first book and most famous film, uh, The Silent World, where he just has a reality marvel where he summons the ocean. Where you are becomes the ocean. Good luck, scrub. <laughs> so Lucky's going to basically parse down this list a little bit for you. One, determine what kind of servant you need. Two, look up famous people or fictional characters within that scope. Three. Do a bunch of research on them. From that, and four, from that research, find similar servants and with abilities so you can compare. Five, make sure that your servant is not too strong nor not, or not too, um, weak from other servants to achieve balance. Yeah. Uh, final. Uh, then ignore all that stuff if something cool happens. Yes. Rule of cool is always in effect. Right. You, so you set up all those guidelines, you come up with all that stuff, but then when you have a really cool idea, whether it's in the narrative or just in the background, you're like, okay, well, even though it's dumb, we'll do it. Because that happens all the goddamn time. Oh, yeah, no. Like I said, rule of, like, especially in Fate, rule of cool is always in effect. Yeah, I've had actually, to to divert back to the homebrew, that is actually a question I've had back and forth with the players, where, like, sometimes they'll feel kind of reticent about what they want to do, or we'll talk about, like, stat lines I've done for the library and be like, man, those guys are really strong. And it's like, hey, whatever. Um, and definitely, if you boldly stride forward and have a cool idea, it definitely seems like that's more rewarding. Mm-hmm. And just like, a, a lot of, uh, there's occasionally we're still getting over some of those early jitters of like, okay, but what is the rule, right? And I'm like, I don't know about the rules. Like, just, just, 
just do them. Like I wrote a preface to the to the homebrew recently, which is just like, okay, so here's here's the thing. Ultimately, the rules are guidelines, and the rules work for you, not the other way around. Which is honestly how most fictional universes work, anyway. Like this this applies obviously to the RPG that I wrote or hacks together because it's heavily based off another mechanical system. But anyway, um, that also applies to writing, right? The story serves you, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. I know there will some be some people will be like all zen about it, like, no, dude, I serve the story. But ultimately, the story is what you, the author, want to write. So you just sometimes have to just be like, no, nah, but it's more interesting if it does it this way. And I'll figure out why it does that later. And uh, like, I'll gotta be honest, like yeah, real quick before you go into that, lucky, gotta be honest, Nasu, honestly, will sometimes skip that last step of having it make sense later and just do the cool thing. Mm -hmm. Also, remember, it is a very Japanese writing style just to dig deep and grab extra bullshit out of your fucking pocket for no goddamn reason. Yeah. Determination and is one of those uh, one of those pillars of Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. It's great. I fucking love it. I don't know why we're having, like, a last-minute power-up, but it looks cool. You know, when you cross your arms and the theme music starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> just remember, you always have to have that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Emblem had a little bit uh, left there at the end. It's like... My apologies if the question was wor really worded. It wasn't emblem. We got you. We got you. Yeah. Quick as a cool. as a like extra follow up um, to that, if you are interested, uh, do check out the APs one because there are there are literally players playing homebrew characters. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, while I've said this before, Dallas's character is arguably vastly overcomplicated for the system. He's also really interesting and fun in a really fucked up way because he's playing the founder of the Spanish Inquisition, basically. Um, so he's a super fun guy, but um. You get a lot. Of, we do a lot of these frank and open discussions about how shit works, um, and also there's links to the documentation so you can like look at some of the original stuff we've done for the game. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Also, quick, I hope Lucky feels better as soon as, as being under the weather can suck big time. Lucky do goo. So, emblem, thank you for your letter. The next one here is from some guy who exists now wearing a hat. Very important. Dear Lucky Omega, I hope you're doing well. I come to you with a simple question. If FGO, if FGO were to do a crossover with another gacha game, what would you want it to be, and why? P.S. The rate up is not a lie. Summer Mo role exists. Smiley mm. face. Right now, honestly, like, I know it hasn't come out in the West, but based on character designs and what I know, I kind of want Sinnoh Alice. The fucking Yoko Taro game about fucked up shit. Like, I, I feel uh, like one of those original stories would work better. Like, like on, honestly, like, like a Fire Emblem guy, like, we did Fire Emblem Heroes X FGO. That would be, that would Aesthetically, that would make sense, but like thematically and for crossing over properties, that would be like, nah, it's weird. Also, if I remember, Sinnoh Alice has characters like Kaguya and Cinderella, which would make sense in kind of a fake game, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's that's like my knee jerk reaction. I am also I am breathing registered for Sinnoh Alice, and I'm excited. Everyone, take a drink. Uh, let's see here. Omega, do you have a do you have a uh, any particular? No, I yeah, mean, like, I like I like quite a few gacha games, and I, I mentioned the joke about, like, Arknights or something, but honestly, there, other than the fact that you could get some interesting and funny, like, voice actor jokes, like, like I said, like, honestly, like, like, Arknights or even, like, Azure Lane or something has, has a lot of, like, shared voice actors because they're big deals in the industry, so you could do some funny, some funny references there, but nothing really burningly jumps out to me. I like on, honestly, Arknights is probably the closest just because they have a, they have their very stern, you know, like, class system mm -hmm. that actually works and you could actually like translate some of that stuff yeah <laughs> here comes the gunner class i guess no no clearly lucky those are archers uh oh yeah huh. clearly as no as no no what? no watch. They're gonna make attacks me with double smgs no 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 you say that but watch they're gonna make fucking silver ash an archer because his bird attacks from range funny he does have a ranged attack that would that would be hell that would be the double <laughs> hilarity. Is like they go to all that trouble to like make those units, and then they're like completely different, right? Like yeah. you think, oh, Silver Ash should be a saber. He's got a sword cane, and the guard symbol is a sword, right? All right, ah, cha. No, that means exercise would be a berserker. I do have a lot of exercise. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I told. I don't know if I told that story yet, but I did roll a Mastima, but it was in a ten roll that also contained another exercise. <laughs> no, Chen would be a saber. Chen is totally a fucking saber. Jesus. Oh boy, how do you? She shoots beams. Mm -hmm. I, honestly, I think the only thing is, like, um, defenders don't work at all in the FGO system. Like, they would have to figure out what the fuck. Like, Hoshi's an you know, Oni, she... she'd probably be a, she'd probably be a berserker just cause, but then it's like, okay, but what's like, like, what do we do with Neural? She's got a mace and a shield, but she's a nice sure. lady. I don't know what they do. Sure. Ryder? She's a horse, I guess. I don't know. Like, m 
most other than our, our beloved Kohai Mash, most of our shield heavy tanky characters are lancers, but I don't know if that works for everybody. It Doesn't Nero would... actually use a lance? Uh no, she is a mace. A mace. I forgot. I don't know what I don't know. I guess it's because I keep thinking of her as horse. I'm like, horses with shields use lances. That though that would be a funny one talking about stuff like we talked about like range attacks. No, no. Oh, uh, it's it's Liskarm who's an who's an archer because she has a a flash shield and a gun, right? Yeah, like you'd be like, wait a second, <laughs> hold on. Um, no, that's the kind of thing where they could do a lot of really really funny stuff. We could go into this more on WhatsApp. Yeah, I said, it's fun to think about. Actually, um, I honestly have a couple of funny topics for WhatsApp. I'll talk to Lucky about later. <laughs> some ideas I've had watching some videos right. and stuff. So some guy who exists now wearing a hat plus one hat. Thank you very much for your comment. As a, we'll probably think and talk about this more on What's Up, where we can fill the time with Gotcha Talk a lot. So, on to the next one from the alias, Shion. Hello, Lucky and Omega. Thank you for choosing my post to read on your latest Let's Talk FGO episode. You're very welcome. My question for the week deals with the big four. Where do you feel that Tomambo stands in comparison to Waver, Scotty, and Merlin? If you think she needs to be changed, how would you do that? Honestly, I don't really think Tomambo really needs a change, per se. Well, and also, here's the thing. Um, I think, yeah, Tomo has three buffs. Yeah. Um, two of, one of which is still upcoming, I believe. So she has an, I assume it's an NP interlude, but that increases the amount of heal she gets. We've already got Fox Wedding. Mm-hmm. Um. Did we get the curse, the uh, curse upgrade? No, that character? is after a strengthening quest. Okay. Um, so we've got Fox Wedding up, which means now her, her arts buff heals, which means she's a very big targetable heal. And then her curse ability will be increased to not only have a uh, maximum 100% chance of uh, reducing their charge with a 5-turn cooldown, but also um, increase all allies except self NP damage by 20-30%, to so 30% probably, for 3 turns, which just cements Tamamo as the arts NP supporter. Yeah, like, so here's the thing. So, Waver, like, Waver's the neutral. Waver, you can just slot in fucking anywhere. He's going to do good. He gives right. everyone... Waver is up to 50% battery and then just damage cut, damage plus, crit up. Yeah. So, he's good. He's neutral. Um, Scotty and Merlin both do what they do for the respective classes with, you know, Scotty for quick, Merlin for that. What makes Tomo stand out, though, is is that the fact that her NP gain um, is linked to her Noble Phantasm, which she can loop. I won't say, like, per turn, but... Fairly but regularly. She, she has an arts NP that also gives team team NP gauge. Yes. And also, also, this is important. This is like, I think there's only literally, I've only seen another one other servant that can do this ability. Gives the ability to reduce skill cooldowns. And mm-hmm. does this for all servants for all skills. And that's per NP drop if she drops one. And you are right. Yeah. I believe only um, Maid Altar has that as a targetable with her coaching skill. Yeah, and I think she takes a demerit for that. Yeah, she loses HP for that, I believe. Um, there's yeah. also there is also a Mystic Code, but obviously that means you have to deal with like a ten turn cooldown or whatever. Yeah. So the only thing that Tamamo basically basically missing right now is she has no team wide buff for damage, which she'll kind of get. Well, yeah, her MP it, one will be added. It'll be added, but whereas I I, I forget what does Scotty's MP do. Okay, so I was going to run this through, so we'll, we'll, we'll cover the big three, because you're probably yeah, familiar okay. with some of what Scott Scotty's not out yet. So, yeah. um, her first skill is a increase in allies' quick card effectiveness and crit strength for three turns, um, and it's a pretty big one because it's it's targetable on allies, so that's like mm-hmm. a, a mana burst, and it for quicks, it's a huge critical buff. Mm-hmm. Um, her second skill decreases all enemies' defense and critical rate, so it softens them up, mm-hmm. and then she has a targetable 50% NP battery. What okay. her NP does is gives all allies uh, one hit of evade, um, increases their critical strength, and gives them death immunity and damage cut. So it's okay. basically her her first skill means that your quick crits and your quick effectiveness is, for all allies, is very, very strong, which quick needs because it's a very soft hitting. And then she can further increase your crit damage um, and give you targetable battery. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing about Scotty is that her NP is also arts. Okay. So... Now here's now speaking of the big the big three the big difference is a lot of people will use Merlin and Scotty primarily for their skills. Merlin's Tower of Avalon is useful, but a lot of people aren't banking on, on that at the end of the day. No, they want hero creation and um, what's the second skill? Fuck. Illusions, Michael. Yes, which is something a whore does for money. Yeah, but with Tomamo, while you're probably going to spam um mostly uh Fox's wedding to get that art buff. 
you basically want her effects out of her NP, which honestly, in my opinion, you'll be able to proc a lot more often than you will be able to proc those other servants, yeah, um, that's the thing. Uh, uh, other servants' uh, skills. Uh, like we said, Tammy's got an arts NP that has a, a party-wide charge. Um, Merlin is almost as bonkers. He's got a charge over time skill, and also he yeah. has a passive NP gain skill with his mixed blood. Um, but then the other thing is like, like you said, the thing about Merlin is while t- while Garden of Avalon is really good, it's over time, right? It's per- it's a ter- per turn effect. Whereas Tomo is instantly you get battery, your skill cooldown goes down, you get healed, and um at her with her buff, her it- her interlude that's a two K heal at NP one, which is. Mm pretty decent, and then she's got a targetable one, right? So, yeah. if you get her looping, she'll recover you some damage pretty fast. Yeah, that's why a lot of uh, people consider Atomimo really key for art stall teams, but she's also kill- she's also just, you know, vital for just arts anything team. Yes, um, especially once she gets that team NP up, because arts is all about I want to fire my NP as much as possible, as big as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, that will really cement her as like, Tomo was already pretty good, and then they were like, Let's uh let's buff one of her key skills even more and be like, okay, well now she's just really really good. But, like I think the only thing is that just she hasn't gone the full buff and they haven't buffed morph A because um A level morphs are actually really good because that's three turns of thirty percent defense and then one turn of another thirty percent defense. So on that one turn she's got sixty percent defense up. So she tanks mm-hmm. pretty hard um mm-hmm. combined with heals. I guess the only other thing is that it's not targetable. So, but even so, like, I don't even know. Like, I guess give Tamamo a personal battery on it, maybe? Oof. Like, so you can just, Oof. like, if you gave her, like, a, 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 a even a flat 20% battery, that would be like, okay, Tammy, here's a K-scope, and we're just gonna start. We're gonna turn one into her NP. Go ape shit. Yeah. Like, God, God forbid if it was, like, a, oh, God, if they gave Tamamo a rapid casting tier, like, uh, you know, like an 80% or more charge, ooh, spooky spicy. But they probably won't, though, even though she's permanent, because she's already really, really good at what she does, is the thing. Yeah, yeah, so, like I said, I think Tomomo's fine as is. I won't say more to more Tomomo's strength. I said, uh, you know, a Tomomo fan club for life. But, no, she's fine. She's not, like, I said, she's good at what she does, as is everyone else. It's just I, I, basically... Like I said, I, th- I think just the NP thing just yeah. helps cement her for arts, because that's like, that's like, Scotty buffs your quick effectiveness and your criticals on quick, right? Which is yeah. what quick once. So, they kind of leveled Tamamo out by making it so, oh, she also buffs NP, because that's what you're doing with arts, is NP. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alright, but thank you very much for oh, your letters, you know? Next one from... I think the interesting thing, not to, not mm-hmm. to interrupt too much, but this is mostly the show at this point, because we don't have too, too much to talk about other than other than our half-assed Buddha Buddha thoughts, which are still very slow, because mission-based events are fun, but take time. Time. Um, but, like, I've honestly, I think what we need to see more is we need more we need more FTP and more low rarity kind of like budget support options. Like, well, I was about to like I was gonna mention that like Caster Gill, he's great. Fucking yeah, Caster's uh, a good one. Yeah, um, because he um, he he um arts generally has no in, has no star gain. Uh, mm-hmm. you pop his King's Return skill, your arts will have star gain. Mm-hmm. Solid with charisma. Solid with um. And then he has a team arts buff too. Yeah, it's his third skill. I forgot what it's called, like Sovereign something. Uh, Sovereign of Magical Wands. Yeah, there it is. So, like, he's a really good, interesting option. Um, speaking about Buster support, Leonidas is actually a really good Buster supporter. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a Buster support NP, which is really interesting. Uh, but it, it, he has a lot of team Buster buff. He has a lot of taunts, Stargen, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I guess we just need the... Other than the fact that there are a couple of characters, like, they kind of made Osakaba Hime kind of split between Buster and Quick because her Quick buffs weren't enough. Um, like, it, it, it would be more interesting to see if they do some more either hybrids like, I'd love to see a character who is truly quick and arts helping. Uh, like, Odysseus has a team, has, I think, a team quick arts buff, but it's not his big deal. Actually, you know what? Speaking of unique supports, um, Renez, or Sima Yi, is a really interesting because that's a rider who is built like a, built like Waver, basically, built like a support caster. Hmm. So that's going to be really interesting to see that. That's next year's collab. Next year? Yeah, next year. Next year. Because it's Case Files, and then it's Requiem. Requiem is two years from now. Got it. Boom. Locked in. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, as I said, it's something like, we can talk about at length, but as I said, I don't want to spend forever here. So, on to the next one from King of Hearts. Yo, Lucky Omega, first time I'm posting for a mailbag. Hope this gets in. Anyway, my question is, between Scotty and Napoleon, who would you personally roll for extra M- MP levels? I have 15-ish USOs. 
So, is this the same person? Are we I being, don't are, know. I, are I we know. being punked right now? I don't know. I don't fucking know. Look is going on. Look is going on. So, I'm grabbing one copy of Scotty, but not sure if I want to use my course for more copies of her or use it before um use it beforehand for Napoleon. Thanks guys and cheers. So, okay. Lucky's not going to think about that too hard. So, as we were just talking about, Scotty is basically the quote unquote savior of the quick meta. But necessarily, her additional MP levels aren't going to be what you're going to want to be spamming for what she's best at. What's Napoleon's kit like on um, MP-wise? I don't know. Well, so, number one, I actually heard, because some people actually, like, call, not really called this out, but were kind of like last week, oh, you know, uh, Scotty's not uh, FTP friendly because her NP, you need multiple NP levels to do crazy loop strats. I don't actually know if that's true, because um, NP 1 to 2 on Scotty is just... 30% to 40% crits, they may have misunderstood how Scotty works. Dunno. Um, Dunno. But do you want to throw that out there? That is that is what you get out of an extra Scotty. Your crit buff goes from 30% to 40%, which is okay, I guess. Yeah. Um, so Napoleon is an archer. He is arts, arts, buster, buster. Um, and he's got a buster AoE NP that uh, deals death ignoring a damage like Emia and deals bonus damage to Divine, so that's his primary thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's got a... Uh, He's got a charisma, which gives him an extra attack. He's got an NP, uh, basically got a tactics and star gen buff. And then he's got a, it's not quite pioneer tier, but it's a pioneer style skill, which gives him pierce invul, NP, and crit stars. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what he does is he's kind of, he's almost like a Tesla in that way, but with a little bit more of a put together kit. And in fact, I think Tesla gets some buffs later. So he's just... I'm going to give my whole squad big buffs. I'm going to self-battery myself, and I will do a lot of damage to divine enemies that they can't ignore. Um, what his extra NP level does, thus, is it's the typical stuff. It goes from 300% to 400%, which is the... It is the single biggest... You know, 1 to 2 is always the single biggest jump in terms of percentage. Mm-hmm. But it's not that huge of a deal. Like, a lot of the times with these, with these basic bitch AoE NPs... NP1 is fine, and then NP2 is like, that's decent. But a lot of the time, if these guys underperform, they usually get an NP interlude or rank up, which increases the damage buff anyway. Well, I said, it lets you, um... Just let you overcharge. Yeah, always lets you overcharge. That's always good. So, from that, I'm lucky he's gonna actually probably blow some minds. I'm gonna probably say Napoleon actually is probably your best bet. Between Uh, Scotty and Napoleon? Probably. Just because you get a very firm, just more damage, and you can overcharge, which means more trait damage, etc. Yeah. I like so, how Moth just popped in and is like, I prefer Nobu over Napoleon. Sure. Sure. They're very similar. I actually, before Napoleon actually came out out of nowhere, I actually designed a joke version of Napoleon who was just French Nobu. <laughs> it's not wrong. They took it in a different direction, which actually I approve of, but still. Like, just just, just transpose Nobu's obsession with rifleman lines to Napoleon's obsession with artillery, because he really was. That's it. That's all you need. Yeah. Ah, oh, man. So, King of Hearts, thank you for your letter. I hope you forgive me soon. So, next one, alias, birthday partying proto. Um, Dear Omega and Lucky, everyone knows that servants have skeletons in their closet. I don't know if they really call them skeletons in the closet. They're, they're all up and it's like, yeah, I did some bad shit. What of it? Come at me. But before we go dark, here's a light question. Since it's my birthday, by the time I edit this, which birthday line do you like and didn't like? L- okay, let me tell you something, y'all, real quick here. When it's Lucky's birthday, he literally goes through every single servant's birthday lines and giggles because they all make them happy. If if you want to talk about something that brings joy to Lucky's life, it's listening to the servant's birthday lines. It's great. makes him happy. There is not one that I do not like. Do you you have a particular favorite uh, birthday line, Omega? Uh, Nah, it's a lot of fun ones. There are a lot of really good ones. Um, I think the one that gave me the most feels is Berserker Lancelot. Like, when I started rolling that one in the middle of the night, and he's just like, I'm like, oh, he cares. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Pat Pat the Helmet. Um, tink, tink. They're all just a lot of fun. They're all good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- and now for the dark part. What surface atrocities you can't get over? Um, Lucky has uh, stated this for the record. Lucky doesn't really care. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like the whole, like, they're all, for the most part, they're fictional characters. Like, I, th- mm-hmm. I think I've just mentioned the one thing is, like, I'm I'm really not okay with Caster Gills, the child murderer, but also mm-hmm. he did that on screen and fade anyway, so it's not even about his atrocities. It's just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, as a one, they're fictional characters. Two, they're fictional historical characters, so what they have done has already be done, been done and cannot be undone. 
Three, they're now working on with you to save the the fate of the universe ish, maybe world. I don't know. Time space concepts uh, may vary. Four, um, Lucky has always said has always said this about being. Well, I probably haven't had said this online or whatever because it doesn't really come up. But Lucky has the has the belief if you cannot try to understand or empathize with someone and what and what they have done, whether it be good or evil, like why would you ever expect someone to do the same for you? So I put that practice. In. I put that pra- I put that um purpose into practice. And when I look at a villain and I go, why did they do this? And and how come? Usually I can come to some sort of reason. Like fuck, even with Caster Gill, uh, Caster Gills, there's been studies saying that maybe that whole thing has been fabricated for like reasons of trying to get his land, or fuck, maybe he just literally had a mental breakdown from the fucking his fucking saint being turned into a um, yeah, fence. So. Yeah, no, they did bad things. And no, I'll never forgive them for it, but I'll understand them for it. And because I understand them, I'm able to, you know, work with them. It's, it's that kind of thing. I'm not just going to be, I'm not just going to be like, no, fuck you. You did bad. Never. Not to, not to mock Omega at all there. I'm, I'm just, I'm just making a, uh, what's the word? Exaggeration. There we go. Yeah, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm mostly of a similar mind. Like, generally, I don't, I don't let stuff that the characters may have done in real life past or even in, in, usually in fiction bother me. Mostly I'm just like, did you do something on, this is going back to the characters I do I unexpectedly dislike. What did you do on screen that I can see, right? Mm-hmm. And like, that's that's kind of the character we're working with. That's what the writers are doing. You know, everything's interpreted through the lens. There's no, there's no one true version of everything. So like, that's another thing that, you know, on the converse, I don't, well, maybe not the converse. On the subject of this, like, I don't really like get in for, for the whole like, pulling critique of the artists, like, oh man, the artists, I can't believe, oh man, you made this person who's a, a huge fucking monster a cool guy, or oh, you made this person who's really normal, super evil for some reason, I'm just like, that's just how the story flow goes. I'm not gonna obsess over all the different stuff they could have done, like some people. Like, again, like, we go through fucking the list, a lot of people did some fucked up shit, that maybe not fucking, uh, like, literally Nobunaga, everyone's fucking favorite, literally burned a mountain full of people, because he just got fucking pissed at them. Yeah, uh, like, there's a there's a reason why why like you may find that Fate Nobu is all jokes about Demon King of Six Heaven. So maybe they're not jokes. Um, jo- if you go to Japan, uh, they, they there are actually some portrayals which are like, man, Nobu Nobu was an asshole. They're a literal demon kind of stuff, yeah, right? Like that's a yeah. pretty common trope yeah. about Nobunaga. So it's it's the same it's the same thing. Yeah, but I just don't you know get into it too much. Also, yeah. I do want to say, throw a shout out to like, uh, you know, just a comment there. Tyrion was like, "Omega still doesn't like Semi Ramis." That has nothing to do with Semi Ramis doing anything. Like, I even <laughs> called out in the wanted most of the shit they say she did was made up. That has nothing to do with any of the actual legends of Semi Ramis. I'm still upset about Semi Ramis for very selfish and personal reasons, which is <laughs> that she needed to fucking leave Apocrypha like an episode earlier. You died. You got stabbed in the spirit core and died. You should be out like 20 minutes ago. I'm sorry, but anyway, that's. That's just going back to the 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 thing I talked about how Nasu breaks his own rules, right? So that, <laughs> yeah. well, it wasn't literally Nasu; it was um, uh, Higashide. But still, it's kind of like um, it, it's like okay, so technically you've lost; you should be dead. But it's a more interesting scene if you stick around for like twenty more minutes, so we can do the conclusion. So you do. It's just how it works, you know. Mm. So yeah. So again, atrocities don't really bug Lucky. Like I said, if you go out throughout history, there are people doing atrocities for all sorts of reasons. And every single one of them thinks they're doing it for the right reason, or they, they're batshit fucking insane. Either way, meh. So, um, birthday party in Proto. Happy birthday, by the way. Um, thank you for your letter. Yeah, like, honestly, like, people are mentioning, like, Columbus is just like, eh, I'm not really, like, I'm not gonna, like, celebrate him or anything, but also I haven't rolled him, so it doesn't really matter. Well, I mean, Columbus is a man of his time. Simple as that. I mean, look at us what other Spanish fucking fleets did. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's a lot of the same principle. Like I'm not gonna yeah. like I think all the characters who I have who I like feel certain ways about is because like I said of stuff they've done on screen. Like yeah, no, I'm not over the fact that that uh that Archer Gill is kind of a dick bag because in his primary appearance he's kind of a dick bag who does yeah. some bad stuff. But but when he switches to Caskill, who he's almost a different character. I'm like, all right, you're cool, it's fine, whatever. You know, same with lots of other people. Like um, I don't know, I'm trying to think. Like if there is any truly any. I don't think there's any, like, real villains that if we summon them, I wouldn't be like, eh, it's all right. Like, if there was, like, I, I'd, I'd get over it pretty quick if there was playable team at or, or, or gay tier or whatever. I don't know, like, 
again, like, one of my favorite tropes is the villain that joins your side, for whatever reason. Well, yeah, and, and there's, uh, um, um, well, to speak to one of our favorite uh, novel series mm. uh, that's brought up in the Dresden Files, Harry Dresden, where mm. he's, like, he when he talks about getting recruited to the, the wizard cops, slight spoilers, <laughs> by the way, if you haven't uh, watched further, uh, but the series has been out a long time, so it's your own fault. Um, but when he's doing that, and, like, like, he describes it as, like, oh, it's like a Darth Vader thing. Like, you thought I was a big scary guy, but now I'm on your side, so I'm cool. It's the same principle, right? You're like, mm-hmm. man, this person, this character as a villain gave me so much of a pain in the ass, uh, but now they're on my side, I get them to be cool. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, no, that's what we're talking about, though, Loth, right? Like, I, in Naruto, they're probably talking about Obito. Like, he was an ally who went to a villain, and then he came back around when people actually revealed, and he actually kind of, like, he died, but he kind of, he, he was coming around to, like, you know, he has that moment where he's like, shit, I might have fucked up, but uh, it's okay, because uh, I'm dead now, and I'm going to keep going. <laughs> just, I was just giving me a... Oh, my God, this is... <laughs> Sorry, someone just messaged me on Twitter. Okay, I'm actually going to put my phone away, because I'm at, like, 60% battery. Uh, Well, yeah, Naruto's got some weird phrasing, but th- we talked before about how, like, you know, secret power-ups and, and final determination is a really Japanese thing. Naruto, I don't know if it's very Japanese, but Naruto has some themes it wants to hit, and it will go out of its way to hit them. So, like, I'm okay with what they're trying to say, because the whole point is that you shouldn't hate Obito because cycle of revenge. Yeah, (laughs) Axe Facts. It's not... I like Naruto. Like, I actually like what it's going for, and I like it even... And I understand why other people don't like it. Like, Lucky and I talked about, like, um understanding people. Like, I understand why people don't like it, um, why they don't like about stuff, but... I also, I think the point that it was going for is strong enough that you have to be like, like sometimes you have to be like, no, we just, we have to let go. Otherwise this will never end. That's yeah. the, that's the whole point, right? Is that they've been fighting this fight for like five fucking generations. And at the end, Naruto is just like, no, you know what? We're going to quit. We're going to quit. And it's over now. It's all over. Stop it. And Everyone even if that home. means that some people don't get what's coming to them or whatever, which by the way, I think is, is almost more of a. That feels to me like a very American thing. Like, that's fucking Wild West, like, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna get what's coming to you, kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they're just like, nah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna bother, no. The point, the point is that it's over and we're gonna end the cycle of hatred. Which honestly goes back to that earlier question about, like, forgiving atrocities, right? It's like, yeah. Mm, there's no point in, there's no point in fighting over this again, right? Yeah. Okay. Do we have another question? Uh, let's see here. Oh, <clears throat> So, this one comes from... Oh, so, yeah, thank you for the comment. Um, this one comes from Zerorama. Hello, gang. Hello. Got a simple question that could turn into something longer. Given that we're slowly approaching 300 servants and fate grant order, I was wondering who you picked for the Lightworks to add to the game next. And if you can, come up with a decent skill set, deck slash noble fandom that you make sense to your choice. So, I'm going to tell you right now, Zerorama, we're not going to do that laugh at. I said, oh, well, I could for what I want, because oh, it's yeah. actually pretty easy, and we've talked about it on the show before. Uh, my immediate thought is just... Other than, like, maybe some, maybe some, like, alts and stuff, some servant alternates of summers we've talked about. Uh, I think the the simplest and easiest is just, uh, give me Charlemagne. Oh, yeah. He has Actually, the, we've know, talked about this, he literally has the easiest skill set in the world. Oh, that's true. He's got, I, I would, I would think that he should probably be permanent arts AOE, just because we need that. That could be good. Um, and, and I think, because Joyous is, is all about colors, that would be funny if it was, like, arts or something. He's the same who has all the beams! But he has a he has a he has a standard pattern saber kit. Um, he's got his royal road thing, which makes sense as like a battery or gang crit stars because it's he, he wants to do cool stuff. Um, he's got a mana burst light, which is is an alternate mana burst. So there's your NP steroid right there. And then he's got um a, like knight emperor or something. But there's his special charisma that maybe like uh I think it's supposed to enhance damage versus like evil creatures or something. So like give him also like team evil damage or something. There it is. Boom. It's perfect. <laughs> he exists. Give it. Uh, let's see here. Lucky doesn't have one on hand, especially with skills and noble phantasms. But like, if we were just like pull from Extella, like give me a fucking Altera Larva or give me an Archie, an Archimedes. No, yeah, not like not... I said. It's really it's it's really weird they mentioned that because Extella and FGA were supposed to come out at the same time. In Japan, Extella came out like a year after. But it's really weird that like FGO doesn't do more with Extella. Like arguably, we've turned we've turned CCC an extra into a really big deal. Yeah, but like as I said, like I know Archimedes um is probably pretty easy to stack because he has skills. Like I uh, I know one of his skills. It was just like literally murder machine. 
or something like that. Yeah. And whatnot. But as I, unfortunately, um, Lucky can't like just pull the skills out of his head and he doesn't want to look him up right now because he's lazy and he's working on stuff. <laughs> Though I am going to, because he has a match profile and I own it, I'm going to add. I have a giant list of servants to add to the library, some of which are OCs and some of which are just classic ones. Like, um, because of, because of, uh, Gouda Gouda, I've been thinking about adding a few people from the Gouda Gouda gang. I'm going to scribble Archimedes on my list. Uh, currently the free spot is just under Chachi, so you know, whatever. <laughs> so, um,. Yeah, like, uh, someone in the chat just said uh, Tomovich. I'm pretty sure Tomovich is coming at some point, if not maybe the anniversary or year end. There's no way. Like I said, again, she's literally, literally in the fucking Lost Belt trailer, like, servant slide. There's no way she's not coming. Like, before the we get, before we finish Lost Belt 7, Tomomo, Tomomo will be here. Yeah, like, on, honestly, the, like, like, I could see, like, oh, we're approaching 300, we're approaching the five years, like... Yeah, it's time to end the memes. Muramasa now. Summer Aresh now. Rasputin now. Blah, blah, blah. But also, I mean, that's not necessarily entertaining, you know? Yeah. Like, as I said, she's literally Lost Belt Assassin. And actually, I think we're through every other servant. Ah, and the trailers. I do believe so. Because we did finally hit, like, Canis and Mandricardo in Lost Belt 5. I think that was the last one that we were waiting for. Yeah. Wait, no, no. Um... Alter Ego, Asha Doman. He's not oh, yeah, actually playable that's right, that's right. I'm going to be surprised if they came out around the same fucking time. Wouldn't be shocked. But, so, to turn this into a slight longer thing, Tomovich actually brings up a point I thought of, because uh, I mentioned, like, extra in CCC, FGO has made a lot of work out of, right? Um, Nero was the whole basis of a singularity. Uh, Tomo and her Tomo alternates are really... They come up a lot even though they don't do anything a lot of the time. Like, Cat exists and regular Tomo exists in Part 1, etc. Um, but Vich is a recurring character in Lost Belts, you know, um, while Altera has appeared and some events of Extella are important, we're not really, it's all stuff that's in the background, right? Like, it's not stuff that's to the fore. Um, but CCC is, but... is super important. It's just, that's what I was going to say. We've, we've, like, made a lot of action out of CCC with the collab and, like, Kiara coming back and being a beast in her own right. And, um, mm. uh, King or Protea, point. technically the first, you know, playable mechanical version of King Protea. She appeared in the Foxtel manga, but that's it. So it's really it's really interesting to see them go there, but they have not pulled the trigger on some of these stuff from, like, Extella and Extella Link, which is really interesting. I don't know if we're, like, slow-boating it or what. Yeah. As I said, Altera, honestly, I think she gets a lot of her strength from being a gag character. I mean, anytime she is brought into story, it's, is this bad Civ? Hmm? Yeah, um, she's got a, a very, well, she's a major learning with manga character, too. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what that's I meant. Kinda, they, they've definitely capitalized that into the main game and, like, recurring those memes. Yeah. But also Altera so... is, like, Summer Altera, uh, not Summer, uh, Santa Altera, too, is, uh-huh. like, they def- they definitely know what they're doing because she's got that monotone, uh, Notomamiko voice, and then she's just, like, sheet noises. Yeah, it's done. I can close this. Um, where was I? I lost my place. There we are. So, yeah. So... We're going to move on to the next one here. Thank you, Zero Rama. This one is from the guy who lost X amount of St. Courts for a waifu here. Hey, Lucky Omega, question. Who do you think your most expensive waifu, a.k.a. the waifu who took the most amount of St. Courts? Did she slash she arrive at your Chaldea? Right now, mine is a tie with Semiramis and Okitan. Three and a half 80 packs. I have literally spent more for you and got nothing. Uh, in, if, it, if it includes those I did not get, it's Musashi. I spent at least, I think, $100 worth of her when she first premiered and then I've s- I still threw also a lot of St. Courts I got at points on banners for her and got nothing. Like I'm 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 you know three figures of money and many many figures of St. Courts in the hole still no Musashi and that's it. I can't though remember like I'm pretty sure mine was Vengeance Rolling for Jalter or Kiara. I can't remember which one cost me more though. I'm pretty sure both of them were over 600 bucks though. So and as for ones, like, as I said, like, Lucky usually has a pretty good moment of, um, sometimes he's just like, okay, this ain't that important to you. You can stop, like, with Okitan. I like me Okitan. I want me an Okitan. I'm not gonna go broke for an Okitan. Especially because you know that she's gonna come back, and more frequently than, uh, than Izo even. Yeah. So I'm just like, alright, I made, I gave the good effort, I spent more money than I should have, but, 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 it was a good try. I got something out of it. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Where you take... Take it away. Stop it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you just need to have that gut check of just like, nope, stop, nope, don't need it, nope. Yeah, exactly. As I said, like I said, we got Summer 3 coming up, and Lucky's gonna do 
actually no was summer two well, n- no no i don't think i spent that much it was just that i was getting so many goddamn mama rikos i couldn't fucking yeah i don't it. remember you spending a lot of money you just got like bamboozled like crazy yeah Somebody can act, like honestly. I mean, it's a long journey, but you can actually go back in the in the history of our show because all of this is documented and like actually tally up. Because Lucky usually tells how much quartz or how many rolls he spent. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yep. I am the Kage Incho. Or is it Fuji? I can't remember. I can't remember my Japanese right now. I'm thinking. Ah. Uh, all righty. So, guy who lost X amount of sand quartz for a waifu here. Thank you for your comment. Coming up from right next is from the Master Commander Doctor. <laughs> I know, I wonder what games you're playing. Dear Lucky and Omega, which Nampo Phantoms are your favorite? I'm not asking the ones you find most useful, or the ones you enjoy watching the most. My personal favorites are Abigail and Hokusai. Thanks, and keep up the great work. Well, okay, so I guess you're going for, like, in-game visuals, because otherwise I would say I'm going Blade Works, because I like swords, but, um... Ooh, who do I love watching the most? Um, Abby, Abby is top fucking tier. Abby and Hokusai are really, really good. I appreciate them every time. Um... Yeah. It's mostly because I use them a lot, but I love what they've done with Berserker Lance a lot. Jets. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Who do I, who do I truly like to watch every time? I don't know. That's probably it. There's a couple who aren't out yet who have some really interesting ones because we expand stuff. But uh, yeah, I think that's it, really. Uh, yeah, Abby is a big one for me. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know. Every time seeing it, it just gives me shivers. I'm just like, ooh, ooh. It's got, sorry, yawn. Um, it's got the music. It's got like the, the cool front facing shots. Um. It's, you know, uh, got the weird, trippy space visuals and stuff. Really interesting. Hokusai is not particularly my favorite, because while it's cool, it's... it's, it's eh. Nah, dude, I love the Great Wave of Kanagawa every time. Yeah. So, let me think here. Are there any others that particularly stand out for me? Mm-hmm. Nah, nah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit with Abby. Abby's my good daughter, even though she scares me sometimes with tentacles. Put those away. Put those away. No pancakes. Ah. Uh, so, thank you, Master Commander Doctor, for your letter. This one comes from Jalter's lover that she doesn't know about, sir. That is a crime. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm real curious about this. Do you have a particular go-to team, whether it's Art Loopsons or a team for Vitorgos or a full three-star team and below? Teams with themes, if you will. Personally, for XP farming, I have a maximum destruction team with filled with circus and as many K-scopes as we had. Red means dead, after all. Solid. Um, so, looky... Does actually have a couple go to teams. Um, as I say, he's big on the arts meta. So, like, if I need to, like, sit down and lay down the fucking, um, a fucking wall, I pull out John, Tomamo, and Waver a lot. Um, as I say, it's not as good as some things, some strats using, like, George or Asterios, but it's, it's pretty fucking consistent. With, uh, Waver and Tomamo, um, I can usually proc off John's, um, um, NP uh, fairly regularly, and her NP is NP5, so it does what it's supposed to. And then some. Uh, same with, like, Waver and Tomo's both having multiple NP levels, so it's a pretty, my very good um, stall team. Recently, though, um, with XP farming, I, like I said, I have three K-scopes. I have three fucking K-scopes. I mean, excuse me, excuse me, let me, let me amend that. I have three max limit broken K-scopes. I can do Super fucking well. scope. I can do what? maximum yes. whale strats for berserkers to do farming. Um, Jeremy, like with ember farming, it's like I, I just like okay, what berserker is not bond ten right now? Let's work on them. Uh, right now, I'm working on it's a it's bunion, um, Raiko, and um, I can't remember my third cha cha right now. <laughs> and like as soon as one of them hits bond ten, I'm gonna cycle them out. Probably for Fran, because Fran needs that love. I just haven't leveled her because I don't have bones! Ah, there's bones in the shop. I literally lean back from my bike, just yelling in the background. <laughs> um, for damage, though, um, if I can get away with it, like, I like to bring, um, Nero Bride or, um, um, Saber Shiki, Void Shiki. Um, because again, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm strong in the arts. Um, if I can slot an arts character into it, I usually pair them up with a combination of Waver, Tomamo, and Caskill. Um, I usually have to cycle in Caskill via, um, the plug suit. But that's usually my strat, usually, is big meme, big arts meme energy. Or I unga bunga with Berserkers. There you go, that's Lucky playing 101. Get down with the blue, or fucking blow it up with Berserkers. Uh, yeah, for, I mean, the only, the only team I've actually built that is actually hard and fast and set is I have a three t- I have three turn daily farming which also works for lots of other stuff it's 
uh, Waver, Lancelot, Arash in the first slot, Fran on the pivot, um, and uh, Fran and Lancelot have K-scopes because I have three regular K-scopes. Not a super one, but three regulars. Um, and then the fifth slot is whoever's on support, aka has uh, lunchtime, and then the sixth slot is whoever I'm farming Bond for, and then I just go. That's how I farm dailies. Um, literally everything else, Omega just makes whatever team makes sense at the time, whatever I'm feeling, you know? Um, because I got a lot of units that are specialists, so it's like, oh, am I fighting some bosses? Uh, are they gonna be male? Oh, let's, uh, you know, let's, uh, use, like, uh, let's, like, use Maven here. Uh, are they, are you gonna be, like, a caster boss, and they're, like, a female? Like, some kind of icy caster? Well, I've got a Lucha Nason for that, you know, and just, so it goes. <clears throat> Not even my QP team's really locked in, it's just whatever. Um, like, I'll probably like Lucky if I am actually building, like, to be like, oh, I'm gonna stall this out, that's like, okay, I'm gonna need Jean, I'm gonna need Waver, and I'm gonna need a damage dealer, um, who, depending on the unit, that might be, like, I don't know, uh, like, Lancelot Saber or something, but it's, it's mostly just whatever. What I want to cruise control, use red cards, I've got Merlin, he does that good, uh, but like I said, it really, really, really depends just on what I'm doing, like, I'm, I'm very, I play very flexibly, very open-minded. That does mean I have that problem, like, at the beginning of the show, where I was, like, literally almost derping out because, hold on, wait, I'm trying to assemble my team because I switched off one farming team for a different one, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's how I play. Mm -hmm. All right, lucky. We've got many more of these. Let's keep going. We've got that many more. we got, like... Oh, wait, we do got many more of these. Holy shit. I haven't found anyone... I haven't really found one that I can just throw out because they're all good. You guys are great. How dare you guys? Whatever. we got three. It's fine. People, People apparently... Love long shows, as evidenced yeah. by the fact that I think the three hour one was one of the best ones we've done in a while. Like, it really popped. Hot! So, okay, I'm gonna leave this one, even though you technically didn't follow the guideline. So, hello, Lucky Manga. I'm a random moon, okay? And I have a simple question. Who in the original VM would you say is your favorite master? And to know, Pazette does count, in my opinion, she was technically a master in the Fifth Holy Grail War. Mm. Rin. Yeah, no, that makes sense for a manga. Ah. Uh, so, Lucky's knee jerk reaction is Sakura. I said, like, you, you see that? You see my coffee cup? I'm just just pour that evil grail mud in there. Just pour it in there. Lucky is ready. But, surprising, a lot of people actually, I would actually have to say my favorite is fucking Kyrie. Or Kyrie. Whatever. I can't remember how to pronounce his name all of a sudden. Yoroko. Yoroko version. Because, not only is he a master in two fucking wars, he literally played the longest fucking game um, in the series. And did just a whole bunch of side shit, like, and orchestrating, like, um, Tosaka's death, he then took care of the small Rin, which, again, where's my fucking story of fucking Kid Rin and Kid Gil growing up being best friends together? Excuse me. That should have happened. Um, as I said, he masterminded a whole bunch of bullshit that's got started in Zero, completely manipulated by Gil into finally becoming who he was, you know, has all this badass kung fu church powers and whatnot. It's hilarious, it's hilarious in his own right because of Mabu Tofu. It's like, here, like, this dude has, like, a lot of depth that, you know, doesn't actually get seen a lot because he's just known for Yorokubi Show. So, like, yeah, like, you know, I like a lot of the masters. Like, fucking, um, Emiya is flawed, but, you know, that makes, makes him, that makes him adorable. Ren is just badass. Sakura is the tragic heroine. Um, bleh. Ilya is precious, even though you are fucking... How old is she in Fate Stay the Night? Like, 20-something? She's like 19 or something. Nice, something like that. And very murder-happy. 18, murder. Very murder-happy. <laughs> very murder-happy. And all that stuff, but, like, honestly, I think Kyrie has, like, like, he's he's a lot, he's a big background player who's just all like, behold my plan! Oh no, my plan has failed. And Let's so I think it's... Kill yourself! And then, who's like, uh, my dude, did you really <laughs> expect me to die just because I stabbed myself in the heart? And then that's I think that's what I like best about that scene is it just <laughs> Kyrie just dies like that's it for him like yeah like Ku gets in one more stab and then sets his body on fire just to be sure that's it he's done get yep. over man Kyrie is deep but simple that's what I like about him it's like um Kyrie is a um honestly, honestly enough I think a lot of a lot more people like um Kyrie a lot more than they let on no he's he's interesting and he's he's fun in a way because he is very trolly yes um and he like you said he has a very long lasting impact um in fate that is basically retroactively carried back into zero because obviously he's been working on that one that long you know Mm -hmm. all right but there's your answer uh let's see here so 
Random Moon, thank you very much for your letter. Next time, make sure you actually write down an alias somewhere. And next one, this one's from Captain X. Hello, Luck and Omega, big fan of the content. <laughs> Given her lack of showing in the game, even though her face is on the app, what are the odds of Toria with of Avalon might be Grand Saber and what there is you have on, have on the remaining Grand Sabers? Grand Saber, save servants. Blech, blech. So, save. Save. So, Lucky's gonna find out. Lucky doesn't speculate on Grand Servants that much. He really doesn't. I am the one who's just going to wait, wait and see. I was like, Nasa, what you gonna bamboozle with me? Today? If I expect absolutely nothing, you can't bamboozle me. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Master Strat right there. But yeah, that's, I, honestly, I think that's the way to look at it. Also, the thing is that just all the Grands we know is. We know that to be a Grand, some you gotta have something. Yeah, it does we're not entirely sure stuff, what that something is. But yeah. it's different for every class, so like. As much as people are like, oh, Tori's got to be the Grand Saber. I'm like, I don't know if she's actually the Grand Saber, because I don't know. They're probably going to come up with some weird niche requirement. Like, honestly, like, Musashi probably has a better chance of turning out to be Grand Saber just because she has her weird niche become zero thing and cut whatever. Like, but that might not be what, what it is, though, is the thing. Like, so it's like, I don't, I don't know. And I'm just like, like, my first, um, my second, mm, was actually a retroactive one for misspelling Lucky. But the first one was actually just reading this question. I'm just like, mm, you want me to speculate on theory? I, I I, really don't know because that's the thing. We don't, this is, this is, I will say, is the issue with a lot of theory crafting for FGO and stuff. We don't know the rules to the game we're playing, basically. We don't actually know what Mr. Nasu's magical ride entails. So you, I, I personally urge caution in theory crafting. And I also urge you to stick to what is established. Like, we are just, going up this roller coaster, and it is still nothing but a long, dark tunnel. Yeah, don't. You, uh, very rarely, I think, will the game actually lie to you without explaining it. Like, like some, you know, oh, Holmes is a ruler. Well, they decided he made more sense as a ruler than as a caster, and they came up with an excuse for it, which makes sense. Um, you know, like I, 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 there, the game very rarely lies to you about like classes and stuff. Like a lot, a lot of people are like, oh, what if, what if Muramasa was a caster? I'm like. No, no. He says he's a saber. That's the joke. It's it's much funnier if he stays a saber. Swords. Like uh, the, like it's funnier that he's he that he stays as a shitty saber than becomes a caster because that makes more logical sense or something. Like mm-hmm. I don't. Uh, th- that's another thing. Like occasionally people will be like, oh, but this makes more sense, or oh, but this like deescalates the drama and is and is less complicated. I'm like, no, I don't think you understand this franchise very well. Well, well, especially with, Mur- with Muramasa, it makes sense that he's a saber because remember if he's hijacking Shiro's body. Shiro's body's origin is literally swords. Right. Literally fucking swords. Yeah. Uh, you can't see, you can't see, but Lucky is just gesticulating wildly. Yes, his origin and element is swords. Um, well, also, those people are just, I, people complain about wanky Musashi, whatever. It's just, I don't, what do you want? Like, what do you want out of this franchise? I'm sorry, you've missed it. This franchise has been around for, like, ten years or whatever. It's too late. Gilgamesh already exists. I'm sure he can beat Musashi in a sword fight or something, something stupid. Even though mm. his sword is a is a pillar, it's not even a sword. <laughs> it's a drill, except it's not a drill because in CCC he actually pulls out a drill. It's funny. What? what? No, one of his attack animations is he pulls out a giant golden drill and drills people. It's <laughs> it's a trip, man. I really hope they localize that shit. <laughs> like, give me a, give me a remaster. I want to see this. Oh um, my god, I need I need some Tinkin Top and Gurren Log and crossover art right the fuck now. Like, but yeah, so I'm like, I. <laughs> Hey, it's fucking Miyamoto Musashi, the single most famous swordmaster. Um, how many how many assholes do you know? Quote like the Book of the Five Rings, you know, much like all those people who quote Art of War. Um, it's uh, really it's sense, definitely yeah. a, a a thing that uh, like I I don't get it. I don't get why you're mad. She's it, it's fucking Miyamoto Musashi. She's the coolest. Why should would she not be? Like I like I said, I don't I don't understand. Maybe maybe people are too into Fate Zero, or everybody is assholes and sucks. I don't know. Why don't we have a Sun Tzu sword action? In Rising Dawn? Uh, probably because they don't know what class it would be. That would be fun. Axe, don't apply your fucking move on to FGO. Lucky, we're uh, if, if when I call for it, we're gonna need to stop down the show to talk about nothing for a solid hour. Righto, I'm ready to fucking bath. No, it's fine. <laughs> right. Because, oh, actually, that reminds me. Um, but did you see Milk Gun? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. I think I retweeted it because it was great. But I turned, I, I made it transparent and turned it into an email. Oh, even what? It still has the, it has a little border, but I love it. Uh, I'll, I'll clean that up. Yeah, but it's transparent right now. Oh, that's okay. great. <laughs> turned it into an email. Um, so that was a daily Milk comic, which I loved because it references the Hellboy comic, which we both love so much. We do. 
Is that is that an alter ego? She's got a gun, and it's a belt with a gun. Blam, blam. blam but blam. I just I cut the final panel out and made it transparent, so now we have a belt gun. <laughs> we steal a lot of gun emos with servants. We really do. It's really funny, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry about that. We edited some stuff out. Yeah, Lucky will, like, if Lucky, like, will, Lucky will periodically go through emotes, like, which ones do we haven't used in a minute? I'm gonna get rid of them. And then Omega will sometimes go back and re-add them, and it's a vicious cycle. Yeah, it really depends. Like, if, if your emote is not popular and not and not heavily utilized, it might die. Like, it honestly, die. In, in six months, we're probably gonna lose this, the, the, the horseshoe St. Quartz, just because it yeah. won't make any sense anymore, and that's fine. Um, but, like, um, I stole a rhyme with a gun, that gets used. Mash gun gets used. The Vinci gun, not the Vinci gun, um, Carmilla gun. I think Carmilla that was our gun. first, was Carmilla. No, well, technically we have uh, Mercedes with a gun, but she's not pointing it at anybody, but... No, that's just ada ada ma ma click clack, uh, which I only then, wrote in there because it's 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 a uh, fucking yeah, it's fucking it's, hilarious. It's dead. But then Carmilla was just like, wait, no, this is a perfect emo. It's from a comic of like, it's not a water gun, but it, it has that, way, it has those perfect the that, delete this know, vibes. Yeah, actually, do you know what one that that survived that makes me laugh the most? Fucking Liz Dute. Oh uh, yeah, I don't remember. I think I think Vesper posted that, and because it's an actual um, drawing with my uh, learning with, learn with manga, I was like, I'm gonna steal it. Yeah, um, and it still shows up occasionally, just because sometimes you need Liz on a fucking <laughs> saxophone. <laughs> that was you should do an ass emote. Just Liz, epic sax guy. Somebody make mm-hmm. that edit. Mm-hmm. That's at like a Euro Eurovision concert or something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like if I see an image, I will immediately grab and like edit transparent. Here we go. Yeah, we try not to go like whole hog and like, ooh, we're derp, we're gonna steal somebody's art. But if we see a funny clip, like we'll we'll clip that shit out. Yeah, like I said, um, we don't use um these emails. These are only on the Discord. We don't use them in like yes, any, if mon- we any did, monetized. If we did like monetize them on YouTube as like membership emails or something, we'd have to pick originals like Tyranny Bunny and stuff, well, or just can... just stuff that's that's like you know part of the greater fandom that we could get away with. Um. <laughs> devilish remember this yes devilish draw ass draw ass and oh, we got some funny ones that stick around uh, actually no see, no okay um everyone uh put a pause we're going into fab second i'm gonna go look at our fucking emails right now oh you're looking at them too i'm looking at them right now our earliest one is the quartz one followed by the fluffy one fluffy like i i actually do want to make uh, like in, on my list of to do things is a fluffy tail emote i believe you've talked about that one before yeah i think a lot of our oldest ones are locked in we got the faux kick thomas Sam. Friendship. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh, surprisingly, uh, lasts. Yeah, uh, well, it's because people can... use it a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Altera sip. Wow, menacing phrase. Ah, no one uses abs anymore. Maybe I should get rid of that one. Nor boner. Now that I think about it. Yeah, sadly, I don't think we use it as much anymore. We right, use horny on main instead. Yeah, we do. The b- you should save the boner one just because I remember that being a huge pain in the ass for you to build up. I think it still gets oh. tagged onto certain reactions. Ah, well, I already did. I can re-add it. I, I save most of these emotes. Let's see here. We can put it back later if people complain. Yeah. Uh, Umu, Ada, Ada. I don't know, I think that one gets zero days. Zero days is really a hit or miss sometimes. If it goes away, people will, like, forget about it, and then th- then it'll be, like, two months later and they complain. But I can't do my zero days sign anymore. Um, I don't know. I mean, Omega's not doing any big roles for a while, so we don't need zero days without Screaming Cowboy. Yeah, here we go. It's gone. Han, Sib, Yoda, Kobe, ya boy, gets a KJ. Hmm, Hum is a weird one. Whom I took from my um my senpai is annoying, which is a web uh, a um web comic that I read. It's very good, but it was like I made it. It's like this has some good energy, and it actually get used on a on a fairly regular time. I'm just like, wow. Let's yeah, I think people just like that. Mm. Hmm. Let's see here. We have BB Dab and KP Dab, which get used on occasion. Thomas Shock, very used often. Ma Ma doesn't get used that much, but if I have Ada Ada, I'm leaving Ma Ma. Yeah, we gotta. That's why we have Ma Ma. Is because we need to have Ada Ada Ma Ma. Actually, maybe if I maybe if I can make a like, I, Lucky's been working on making um dual emotes where you type like one and then the other. Maybe I'll see if I can get some sort of combo right code to replace them. I'll think about that. See, we got Tamanom used dual used a lot in certain places. Astolfo Blush used yep. Hopes and Dreams done by our one and only Devilish. Yeah, that one gets a big one. A lot. That's a big one. Drifting, I'll just use. We haven't used Gay Panic in a while, but I want to leave it. I love Gay Panic. Yeah, it, it it gets occasionally used when it comes up. So for those people who don't know, who aren't part of our Discord server, which you should join, Gay Panic is just it's a cutout from a from a uh Ed- Edelf comic, but it's just just good old Edelgard in the background experiencing Gay Panic. I think it was about Byleth's abs. Um, yeah, but we it's used when you think it might be used. 
<laughs> um, and sometimes it's not used, and sometimes it is. Oh yeah, my she, god! I... Yeah, we got real prisms, which we use occasionally. Concern is used. I use plot a lot of time when everyone starts yeah. complaining about Plot's fucking Nasu. Like on, honestly, just because concern is a very like rough one, I almost want to pull it, but people actually use it, so we'll leave it in. Uh, if someone can get me an image, I can. I'll make a cleaner one. Uh, let's see. I use plot just for whenever I'm trying to talk about Nasu shit, and they don't get it. And I'm like, it's fucking Nasu. Then I throw a mushroom at them. What am I read? Used a lot, actually. Yes. <laughs> just that Gramps looking at this book like, the fuck? That also <laughs> works a lot, yes. Rune Sip, I don't think people use a lot. We don't use, like, a lot of Azure Lane emotes. Mm, so. No, sadly. It used to be more popular, and I think you really liked it, but we have a shitload of Sips now, is the thing. Yeah, we do. We do. Carmilla Good, Happy Snake. Yeah, we have Da Vinci Sip and Roman Sip, and that uses a lot. Rapid succession. E- mm-hmm. Extra thick. No, no, it's Always good. extra thick. Because it's a coup. Mm. Mm. Foolish samurai warrior wielding, wielding a, a foolish samurai warrior wielding a <laughs> evil shapeshifter wielding a foolish samurai warrior. I love that YouTube poop. It's just it's just dumb looping, but it's so good. Oh. Uh, we have horny our main, which is literally just a Rio Kiara. Yes, yeah, the April Fool's Kiara. That one's uh, very very a, vital. Doing a pose is one that I took from fucking Puchimas, which is the super deformed show of um. Is it Idol Masters? Yeah, Idol Masters. And it's just it's just one of those general ones. Like, yeah, happy times. But then doing a pose. So, yeah. Sheba, that one's used. Angry Mango, kind of used. Again, it's one of those niche ones where, like, people use it. But it also, I, I I literally cut out ang- Angry's face and stuck it on a Mongo. It's, getting not, getting it's not a big deal. We have to keep right. Golden Ooh, though. Ooh. Golden Ooh. I, we have two Golden Emotes. One is, they're both from fucking... Um, so, they're both He-Man edits. Yeah. But it's 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 basically we edited He Man to be Kentucky and it's great. I love them. <laughs> we have a QP faux praise is good. Ah, He Man gets used a lot more than I thought, but hey, it's perfect. Mm-hmm. We have Liz Dude. We have a Grail. We have Gil Sip. I need to work on Gil Sip. Gil Sip, honestly, because that's one of the double ones I was working on. Couldn't get it to quite line up for some reason. Yeah, I need to work on it. Stacy and Sup He I mean Sup Homie, Sup Homie don't get used a lot, but I want to keep them. Because I like them, they're good. Yeah, I use I heck I used the Stacy one as my avatar for a while after I was the two Stacy guy. Mm-hmm. And sub sub homie exists because you were like, okay, but I'm gonna need a a a, a hate of shades version of Mary, and I was like, <laughs> I got you, fam. Yeah, and I love them. I just don't use them, but I'm happy they're there. We have a prime coin. Actually, we have quartz. We have QP. We have prime coin. We should probably put in fucking the Azure Lane red diamonds somewhere. Oh, just gems. That would yeah, make sense. Just, yeah. yeah. Especially uh, considering the gem racket. We complain about that one a lot. We have the gut symbol, which gets used occasionally. This is fine. I still don't understand what this fucking picture is, though. Oh, it's Jessica in a hole, because um, oh! I did official stickers. It's very small, um, so I'm not super keen on it, but it was funny, so I kept it. And I, 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 do see, I do occasionally see it used, just because we don't have a good emote for digging a hole, or being in a someone, hole. Someone get me the fucking picture of that, because I'm pretty sure I can resize it. Resize that. Uh, Mash your gun, also used Codex Think, also used Tyranny Rabbit, used whenever Lucky's involved. Uh, I'm pretty sure I re-added Defend, because you took it out, and I'm like, no, no, people actually use that one. Ah, okay. People actually Um, use the Ishtar butt cutout. And we have Embers, Rhyme Gun, uh, St. Course Horseshoe, and now Melt Gun. Which Melt Gun probably needs to be cleaned up, but it exists. Yeah. Um, um, And we have have 29 slots left after that. Yeah. And honestly, I think I usually use Codex Think, which is, it's a... It's the thinking face hand with a fucking space marine helmet, but yeah. occasionally other people do, and it's but it it's so perfect though. Mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. like, hmm. All right, um, we will now stop the faffing. Thank you. Excuse me. And uh, as we've been doing this, by the way, we haven't been looking at chat because we can't. So uh, <laughs> no, but we do. Uh, well, a lot of people were posting some of them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, we have. We didn't even have a question in there. We were just talking about stuff. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh... <laughs> Uh, so sorry about that, uh, Captain Next. We tangent it, but thank you. Now, the next one <clears throat> doesn't actually... Oh, wait, no, you do have an A-list. Okay, you just put it in a weird spot. This one is from this name I cannot pronounce. My question for both of you is that if you had the ability to pet, pitch an idea for an FGO Carnival fan down in the segment or episode, what would be the scenario, and who would be the um, servants involved? So, easy. Real fucking easy. I would pick FGO. I would pick the Chaldea Kitchen, and just fucking... All the random bullshit cafeteria hijinks that Emiya has to deal with with feeding a fuck ton of servants. I think that'd be absolutely hilarious. It'd be like some sort of weird master chef with like 
let's see, who are the confirmed uh, Chaldea shows? I think it's Raiko, em- Emiya, Cat, Boudica. I think there's one more. Can't think of them. No, I don't know if I don't know if Benny Emma's actually like manning the cafeteria. I said like I don't I don't know if that's like confirmed. I know just know she's like a master chef or whatever. But I do know it's been like Emmy like Emia just all of them dealing with like ravenous groups of savers, like giant berserk like berserkers, you know, like servants who don't want to get out of the rooms and eat, like probably like Hans. You probably have someone that has to go and literally like drag him to um drag him to uh dinner. Or dealing with people who like to fuck with other people, like, um, Sithen on Yorale, like, making Medusa, like, eat, like, way too much or something. You know, like, again, like, I would love just an FGO-only carnival, um, phantasm. I think it has, like, so much, like, content. It's so great. Do you have one? I'm it. Oh, man. Just, like, immediately? Mm, I don't know. There's a lot of funny stuff. Honestly, like I feel like, um, like learning with learning with mangas, some of their early sketches, which we've seen animated, um, mm-hmm. kind of fill that role. Mm-hmm. I just be like, because a lot of people talk about FGO Carnival Phantasm. What would I want? Um, <coughs> just, just sometimes just seeing people hang out, like, oh, yeah. like short versions of some of the more comedic interludes, like, like Jaguar Band, just follow her around doing stuff, beating up quote unquote delinquents. <laughs> um, Suzuka, I think has a pretty fun one, but I have no JK Fox, so. Yeah. You know, just uh, just kind of see some of these more comedic moments might be fun. All right. Well, thank you. This name I can't pronounce. We're going to leave it there. So we still got quite a few left. So this one comes from Longtime Buddy. Um, hey, yo, Professor Mega and Pseudo Beast Lucky. What do you mean, Pseudo Beast? You can't see it right now, but I'm staring real hard. Eyes, brows, eyes, brows. Commence mailbag mission. Mm-hmm. I, you can tell that I'm slowly losing my, losing my sanity as this goes on. This might be the point. <laughs> I hope we got beast. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky in a suit. I actually cleaned up pretty good in the suit, honestly. Um, I hopefully got a point to a question to both of you. A lot of friends I don't stay current with games, especially those of the gotcha variety. As someone who, when not in a good mindset, can't take themselves to get through very long stories. If there's a gameplay spurs between all the long conversations, I can relate, kinda. So I ask the both of you this. What's a good way to help compel or encourage people to get through content, especially when it's lengthy or difficult? For context, said people really enjoy FGO's premise. Hopefully this question isn't a difficult one. I enjoy all the work you do and hope you keep on strong, even as the world keeps trying to mess itself up. So here's the thing. It honestly depends on the person. Yeah, like, I was about to say, like, uh, uh, you know, like, oh, compel or whatever. I'm like. I have mm. never. I need no compelling or negotiation to read FGO. I like how FGO is written. But if you don't like how FGO is written, certain people who may have written this question, and I know which ones you are, um, then there's like you can't force yourself to like something. Like yeah. just and obviously, you know, we talk about like uh, like lucky you have have attention problems sometimes and stuff. Mm. You know, um, it's just like yeah, okay, you you are, but you you also. You're the guy who literally didn't do Lost But One yet, or until, like, just now. Um, which I think for you, the, the reason why you did Lost But One is because you know Lost But Two's coming out. So your motivation was not getting behind. But, um, what I was saying was that some people, you know, they don't, they can't easily focus on it if they just don't get into it or get it or whatever, right? Like, that happens. Yeah. Um, like, but- honestly, sometimes a break from the game is what people need. Like, sometimes you just can't. Yeah, and for, sometimes- uh, like you said, the the can't like um taking a break is a common writing trick, mm-hmm. uh, and reading applies. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't really. And here and like here's the other thing: like if a person isn't really that fussed to stay current with the game, maybe just the game isn't for them. Maybe it's just not as good as they thought they that. Uh, maybe someone should stop trying to apply external pressure and let them move on to something different. Uh, yeah, and then there's there are especially when it with JP, which is, you know, all in a, a different language than obviously most of the English pe- people who play this game in English were in. Um, there are tons of people who skip the story, do the game plan, like they'll read back later. Um, and I know, yeah. I know, even then there are some people in our community. Sorry, I'm a little burpy. Um, there are people in our community who, in a rush to get to content or farming or whatever, will, will, will skip story segments and they're like, okay, I've caught up. Um, I'm, you know, in the place where I can farm or do the thing. I'll go back and read later. Like, mm-hmm. that's the thing some people do when they're in a rush, is to, to mm-hmm. get through fights, and then they'll read back the story later. And honestly, like that, first... can, that can help if 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 you're the kind of person who doesn't like just being like, oh, man, I don't want to deal with all this reading, but also you, like, they like the gameplay or the units or whatever. That could definitely be a thing to be like, oh, 
what's the context for this fight? You know, where did this character come from, right? You mm-hmm. can do, maybe you want to read back, or maybe not. Maybe you just don't care about the reading. And conversely, on the end verse, if you have, if you like the story, but you're having trouble with combat and whatnot, remember, this is a very old game. There are guides for fucking everything here to help you get through it. Like I said, Lucky, like I said, Lucky's not, Lucky's not a meta player. He's not a guide user. But, um, as I said, Lucky's also the person who stays current and spends a lot of fucking money on this game so he can fucking steamroll some things. Um, but for anyone who's having trouble with the game, like, mechanically, there are guides upon guides upon guides. Yeah, like, if you don't want to progress the Camelot story because Gawain keeps kicking your ass, there are plenty of people who will tell you how to do your optimal setup strat, and there are loads of lovely people, like, in our community and in other communities who will be like, oh, I'll get in your friends list, what do you need? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll put something good in there. Mm-hmm. So, again, well, first off, you under, you have to understand why they don't want to continue. They, they, is it an attention span problem? In that case, they just need a fucking break. Get them to play something else for a while, then have them come back to it. Is it, um, um, is it don't want to read story? Well, skip it. Go back to it later. Um, having trouble with battles? Read some guides. And if it's a time management thing, well, honestly, like, we, you can't do that. You have to prioritize what's the most important to you. And if FGO is not the most important thing to you in this segment, well, that's okay. It doesn't have to be. Like, I said, play your way. That is Lucky's um, top level advice. But I think that answers it. I think. Yeah. He's going to say yeah. So, thank you. A long, long time, buddy. Yeah, there's five you... more. They're, they all fit on one page now. Oh, they do. So. This one comes from the Whale Crow, that's an interesting image, who says, Dear Lucky to Mega. <laughs> In the Nazuverse, there's a variety of magecraft, from general to familial to personal. My question is, if you had to come up with a magecraft that you can use, what would be the general idea of it? Uh, Lucky oh, Swords but fire. My two <laughs> favorite things. <laughs> Lucky would be some sort of artificer making magic item doohickeys. So it'd be probably just an entire extension of the fucking trace ability. Nothing but trace. You see this trace? You see Shiro's trace? My family, we know nothing but trace. It is the greatest trace. It is so great we just build things from trace. Or something like that. I don't know. I Listen, Lucky has a deep and... I don't know what the second word was going to be there. I don't know why. I fucking blinked there. Just has a deep, deep love of... Magical items and crafting systems. Like, that's why I said, fucking Hephaestus, Divine Spirit, like, hey, it's like, give that, let us build some shit. It's gonna be fucking awesome. But, um, so yeah, it'd just probably be some sort of branch of art, um, of, um, artificing, enchanting, things of that nature. Yeah, I don't know. I guess, I guess maybe like, 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 maybe the dragon magic. Like, if we had the dragon factor, that would be cool. Um, but no, generally my favorite, like, supernatural themes are like, uh, is, is, like, like you said, like, instant item creation or summoning or whatever is usually really interesting, probably because I've been this way fade, but then it's just, like, fire or thunder or other basic elemental stuff is really cool. Thunderbolts and lightning. Wait, no way. No, 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 shit, shit, no, no, you will not trap me into this. Fuck, damn you, queen. That's okay. Demonetize. We don't have, we, we, we don't have enough time to go through Bohemian Rhapsody. We don't. I almost got trapped into it, though. Fuck. Ugh. It's. Oh, I mean, if somebody starts out, you gotta. Yeah, I know, but we can't. No, we gotta keep going. Thank you for the question, Whale Crow. Thank you for the <laughs> I can't trying to think of a sound a Whale Crow would make. <laughs> Killing me inside. Crow. <laughs> it was just a long call. I'm, oh, I'm done. I'm losing my goddamn mind. We are. I don't. I think. I think we're just gonna call this one the one where they lose their mind That's or fine. something. I don't know. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. So Crazy this talk. is this is from. So this is kind of a repeat, but this is these are important. So alias gotcha was a mistake. I feel you, bro. Hi, Lucky Omega. I mostly lurk, but just wanted to say that I've been a big fan for a time and look forward to your show every week. My question is, what servant would have an interesting offer, altar? What servant would have a terrible, boring altar? Sorry if my spelling is bad. English is my first language. Greetings from Germany, and keep up the good work. See, it's actually happy. It's like someone in Germany <laughs> listens to our show. I'm just like, ah! yeah, it's happy always fun when we get those little international touches. Yeah. Uh, so we already, so we did answer the altar question, but well, we answered the question in the context of like, who would we want to see as an altar? Who would have an interesting altar? 
Um, that really depends on what they do. There are a lot of characters who have multiple aspects or interests, right? Mm. Well, is it like, um, on, on, like honestly, like Tomo would be an interesting alter. Like I said, there's a lot of Tomo that is kind of well, not that, that, that does remind me of the uh, the thing I was mentioning earlier, right? Like a lot of CCC and Actra have been cut to Jane. I think the only one that's not in there is Nameless, like Enya. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. he does have an alter, though, who's kind of got his own thing going on, which is kind mm-hmm. of interesting, you know, design mm-hmm. questions aside. Um, but, like, I don't know. Um, uh, other people from the Fate Stay Night crew could be interesting to actually see their what-ifs. Like, we did Medea Lily, but we could do different Medeas. Yeah, the Medea we have is kind of the tragic one, but we really don't have, like, a batshit insane Medea. No, and we don't, like... Like, and then also FGO has added the, like, quote-unquote fake alters, like Ku Alter and Jolter, who are like, oh, this isn't actually that person but different it's like we made a different version of them from whole cloth kind of thing right mm-hmm. um so there could be some really interesting characters we do there i would like maybe a liz alter yeah we could do some different stuff with liz like i said like i said like liz is one of those weird like it's like well, she has a the thing about alters is and then we've done an episode about this too um well there's both x uh it's both what would be good and who would be boring i don't actually yeah. depending on what they're doing any alter could be boring that's always a risk right yeah um but I think that there are a lot of, depending on what they do with the altering, because the altering is is supposed to be an external process, right? Like, yeah. the thing about, about like, Saber Altar is there is no evil King Arthur. It's an evil King Arthur who was created by the Grail Mud, basically, and then recorded yes. because thrown, whatever. Um, <laughs> Cruel was like, this is cool, yoink. Yeah. Um, so, and, like, arguably, uh, that's the same with, like, Jolter was, like, there Grealish. is no evil there is no evil jean which makes perfect sense that like that that fits her character very well in her history but if we made one this is what she'd be like and jolter's great um you know um like i'm pretty i'm pretty sure there is a nero alter who is mother harlot but let's not get into that because that's also possibly a beast candidate thing you know um like you said there could be some really interesting takes on like uh that uh well her culture also exists that's just that's just alcades from Strange fate. I guess corroded Liz would technically be a Liz alter. I mean, technically. Yeah, technically that could be a weird. But even then, that's that would be interesting for them to actually portray because honestly, like corroded Liz is like not super explored. She's actually quite interesting because corroded Liz gets very serious, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like on, and honestly, Liz is actually very nice and serious. Actually, she's got a really good introduction in in, in Extella, which actually makes you like Liz a lot because she's genuinely trying to help you. But then through different timelines, shit gets fucked. But she gets kind of the same meta stuff that um, Archimedes does, because she just, I think, doesn't Corroded Liz just show, show up in Altera's root and the Golden Root, just despite the fact that what made her Corroded only happened in Tamamo's root? Yeah. Which are in different timelines, so it's like, yeah, there's a lot of really fun stuff they could do with that. Like, well, yeah, but... Like a but dark like, meta Liz. Yeah, because um, for those who don't know, Corroded Liz is what happens when basically Liz eats the authority of the Moon Cell. Yeah, she it's... steals your regalia, she steals Tamamo's regalia to get super strong, um, mm. and her code gets overwritten, mm-hmm. and she goes all velvet. Um, but she so, has a unique design, you should look it up. It's really cool. And and honestly, the phrasing corroded is really similar, and I don't actually know what the original Japanese is. It is really similar to the way we talk about alters, um, using the, uh, what is literally in Japanese blackened, but was localized in Babylonia as darkened, because, uh, unfortunate implications. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, by the way, does mean that, um, like, playable? Actually, we should have said this. I wouldn't mind seeing the altered Ushi from Babylonia as a playable unit, because um, she's got a different class as a Berserker and does some different stuff. Um, it yeah, might be interesting my to only, see that my, one. My only thing is, is I would actually like a different design, though. Or different ascensions. Well, yeah, and they could do that, is they could do different ascensions, like make her first one just Ushi with the skin flip, but then actually change it, you know? Yeah. They could do stuff like that if they made her playable. Yeah. Um, but also, I just want more... I. <laughs> Yeah, De- Devilish just came up with a good a good um, dub goofism. That's from the because they they kept the fact that in in Super they call him Goku Black as calling him Goku Black in English, which um I probably <laughs> really works for the lip flaps because it's said in English, but also it's like woo woo. That's a very very dangerous way to phrase that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so there's a lot of interesting alters out there. Um, and I think like, the boring one is just, I don't know if anybody would have a boring one. Just, like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, like, honestly, like, a boring servant is honestly the death of a servant, honestly. Servants are servants because they're interesting in some form or fashion. 
And honestly, if they're boring, then they're not popular. Like, think of all those servants nobody talks about. Like, uh, mm. R.A.P., every single silver, single target assassin, a.k.a. all of them, nobody ever talks about them, except that guy, Izo, I guess. Because he's guess. a cool, edgy guy. Izo actually, is actually quite funny. We'll talk about him later. We well, I don't shit. know, Axe. You bring that up. I don't, I literally have never heard anybody talk about his artist. Everybody cries about Serenity. Whoops. Whoops. Uh, all right. But Ser- Serenity is fun, but she's also in stuff. So, Autocor- uh, autocorrect really getting you there. Who knows? I think, well, Camelot was written by Nasu. I think most of the Hassans got a decent, got a decent mention. I'm trying to think. Do we be doing any other stuff? Anyway, mm. we should probably move on. We got some, we got we, a couple more to go. We got a couple more to go. So, thank you very much. Gotcha was a mistake. We're going to move on to BB's Bully Buddy. Nice. This one makes me laugh. So, you raise ship. It malfunctions. You awaken a church. Bells are sounding. You're standing at an altar. You may nay cast the bride, a man announces. Confused, you look to the person standing next to you. It's a wealthy servant wearing a wedding ring. Question, who is it? Uh, parentheses. What would be the most amusing servant to have a bride form for? This is something that I am slightly interested in because I find it really weird that we, like, only have Nero bride. Yeah, I mean, it. and that's based on an actual anecdote from Nero. We've talked about this. Like, Fire Emblem has a, has a regular system of, um, they will do occasionally servants in, like, I think in English they call it spring, but they're in wedding dress themes. Um, popular games like Girls Frontline and Azure Lane do wedding dresses either as uh, skins you can get randomly. Which, Girls Frontline, that's a really a dog end to make me do the whole thing about the ring and the skin. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but Azure Lane does oath skins for free when they come out. And we talked about some spicy ones coming down the line. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but FGO only really did the one. Yeah. And I do know there's, like, I don't know if it would be an Arturia bride, but I do know there's like uh, there's definitely costumes of Arturia and like in a uh, wedding style dress w- definitely. Yeah, uh, um, I actually I think I would do Lucky a solid and say that it would be interesting to do because Nero got one to do alternate Tamamo bride, mm-hmm. uh, which would let them show off. They kind of do that for like Kiyokoyo and some of the other uh, Lady Raita servants, but it would also be interesting to see them pull off a traditional um, wedding kimono look. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, like. Especially since Talamo is the one constantly screaming, like, I am your fucking wife. Um, I'm pretty sure she would go ape shit over a wedding ceremony. Absolute ape shit. Altera but, is just a bride. She's got the the veil and stuff. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, but let's see. So, I'm trying to think of who would I want to see bride the most. Hmm. I said, Omega's already said Tamamo. Uh, yeah, like uh, I said, I think that would be really good to get into there. Like, a knee-jerk reaction would probably be, like like Ishtar or Ren, but at the same time, I don't see them really putting on a wedding dress. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a Resh would. She I mean, yeah. That, she could rock that black wedding dress look. Yeah, she could, but not not, not Ishtar. Right? Oh, no. But also, also, if you put a Resh in a wedding dress, she would die. Yeah. A whole, a, a literal hole would open up and she would fall <laughs> in. <laughs> um... How's it going? <laughs> God, that was... I love it so much. Uh, hang on, hang on. Because he said that... Oh, you're going to pull up the gift? Yeah, I'm going to pull up the gift. Lucky has a lot of saved gifts, though. A lot of them involve butts, he's realizing. I don't know. Does anybody have any famous anecdotes about getting the male one? We have talked about this. That is the thing that sometimes that sometimes fate seems like they're reluctant to actually go over. Like, I'm, re- I'm actually quite shocked that one Nero is so popular, despite the fact that fate is really actually out there with her sexuality. Like, really, really open. Did I? Oh, found it. Yeah, so got that one before. <laughs> Scooch. Ah. Uh, Actually, no, no. I'm gonna do fucking Omega Solid. Medusa Bride. That would be pretty cool. And and, and honestly, um, if I now that I'm thinking about it, like that's the thing. An, both Anna and Medusa don't really dress like say Steno and Urale do. Mm-hmm. Like even in her higher ascensions, Anna does have her slightly own kind of thing. That could be mm. interesting to like again take that idea and kind of like redress Medusa in an interesting way. Like I said, I feel I feel like. Despite the fact that she has so many alternate forms, I do feel like Medusa is a little underutilized. Like, yeah. there's a lot of stuff out there for her they could play with. Mm-hmm. Ultra Danger Zone and say Kiara Bride. I can see that, but at the same time, I can't. You know, I, that would be that's kind of like that's kind of like the reverse thing. That like either somehow it would be like her nun form and it would be like the lewdest thing, or just like Kiara would just die. Fran is also already a bride. Mm-hmm. Literally, that's her normal ascension. She's already wearing her her wedding dress. Also, BT Dubs, in case you didn't know, her uh, her club is called the Bridal Chest and is subtitled The Maiden's Chastity. So that's her chastity belt, is the giant lightning club thing. <laughs> you touch her wrong, she's gonna hit you. Bonk. Bonk. Alright. But, yeah, so I think I think Medusa and Tomo, like, one, because despite her being underlined, Medusa, Medusa still is a very popular character. Yes. Very popular. Keeps showing up and stuff. 
Um, mm-hmm. Another one, like, hey, fun fact, Medusa's on the, the bonus list. Uh, Medea also is another character they don't, they haven't really gone gone crazy with, despite the fact that she's super popular and is also literally a bride. Ugh. It's kind of a, I don't know, but her being a bride's kind of a part of her uh, tragic backs. Well, I don't want to say tragic, but no, it's tragic. Literally a tragedy, yes. Yes. So, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. So, thank you, BB's Bully Buddy. Um, We're going to keep moving, because we are almost done. Which, funnily enough, isn't the end of the show. No. We got Actually, i got to read this one. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I actually didn't read this one, so I'm not... Uh... <laughs> okay. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. This one's from Tyranno, but I literally had to read, like, the whole thing to find the damn name. Yeah, I was about That's to saying. say, I, I've noticed this earlier. Oh, shit, are we going to skip Tyranno? No, no, he does say, but it's weird in there. Yeah. So this was from Toronto, who asked, Hey, Lucky Omega, so now that we've seen Zeus, Zeus and Co. and LB5, and now have the possibility that they might be playable in the future, do you think that we'll get more gods, especially in the Norse ones, since Odin and Thor died in Ragnarok, if it happened in Nosiverse, so they could be summoned in their original forms? Or do you think we'll get them like Skahawk, Scotty, or Rom- Romulus Quirinus? From Toronto. P.S. I don't know if Scotty exactly like Saint Seiya Roma, I'm just guessing because their names are similarly spelled. What? Oh, it's it's the equal thing. Oh. I don't, uh, I'm not actually 100% sure if they're supposed to be similar, but, because there's stories and stuff in them. Um, first of all, um, Omega d- drops a big hmm on that, might be playable in the future. That's a big hmm you just dropped there. You have, eh, they weren't playable after the Lost Boat came out. We yeah. literally had nothing. Like, they had a whole lot of nothing in those extra banners and did not include them, so that's a big hmm. hmm. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, first of all, no, their original forms will not be, just because that is a thing that actually, they have been very keen to stick to. You don't just summon divine spirits, right? Like, they yeah. have to be, um, like, the hi- we talked about this with, like, goddess score. The highest we get are Sitheno and Yurale, who are so actually weak as divine spirits, they are physically stronger as servants, so it doesn't matter. The, like, the, the servant container can hold all their powers. And Ketz, who is um, described as a Bunre, she is actually a split off the main Quetzalcoatl, because that is a thing that that's how the Mayan gods work. Like, it that version of her is already a forked aspect, so it's not the whole thing, right? <laughs> that is um, the Lucha Fork. Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, so, I, 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 it's also really funny that you go for Skahawk Scotty and Romulus Quirinus, uh, and not, I don't know, all the other pseudos we've already got. Astraea, well, I think they're going- Ishtar. I mean, yeah, I guess I guess the point is we're going for like, oh, but what if we get the gods and originals? Nah, no, I don't think so. I don't, I don't. Well, well, speaking specifically about Norse, I can definitely see it. Like, there's the, I, there's the... Uh, I, I, Lucky, uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I hate to, to reveal too much about Lost Belt 2 to you, but I think we've missed that boat. It, it already happened in, in JP, and we got Scotty out of it. Yeah. Well, I said, like, in the future, there's, because I said, like, there's still the, like, in other works, there's, there's been more Norse characters, like, uh, it's the son of Thor in, um... Well, yeah, that's the, the, the quote-unquote spoiler is that the... Th- Thor card isn't actually Thor, it's Thor's son doing Thor things, pretending to be Thor. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and they could pull off the, some of those. And didn't you say there was some weird fact in one of the that one of the characters, because there's some of the fucking Fenrir? Yes. Yeah. So there's more Norse things in the Fate universe. It's just that, well, when they will they ever get to FGO? I don't know. Like, are but, we just going to pull out Odin? No, I don't think so. I think, no, I'm, probably I not think Odin, we're no. going to do that trick, we would have done it already, right? Like, even if he died, he's still a divine spirit. All the gods are dead already. We yeah. still can't summon them. Ah, uh, good on this. God is dead. So, I said, there's always the possibility, but as I said, like, I, like nailing down something? I don't know. It's like, I said, your chances of getting a new god servant are basically just as good for getting Norse. Norse mythology servant is just as good as, you know, basically any other other. Shoot, when are we going to start pulling out more African gods and whatnot? There's some crazy stuff there. Um, or more South American stuff. Who knows? Who knows? We usually focus well, on South America. Just... Probably, probably Lost Belt Seven because that's in that region. Oh yeah, true, true. Where everybody, everybody's really waiting for those last couple of Lost Belts because those are going to be in some really interesting places and do some really interesting things. We hope. No, Jesus Christ is literally probably Savior, which is on par with fucking Buddha. Yes, we have not actually introduced the Savior class. Is yeah. it on the record? I don't think that was. I think that was the post show where we sat around and talked about Fate Two Engine. Um, we I talked with the with the the homebrew AP crew about some Fate stuff and talking about class balancing. Um, and I do kind of agree. We need the something that's kind of like reverse alter ego, something that is um strong against alter ego but weak to foreigners, and maybe also hits knight classes. Mm-hmm. And that could that could be Saver. 
who has already appeared as Buddha in Extra. Mm-hmm. Um, and you could, there are honestly, there are a couple different, there are a few different messianic characters you could pull from that are not like the big one of like the Jesus. There's a couple different possible messiahs in there. And then obviously you could do, you could do uh, the funniest Kiara altar and have Kiara the actual Buddha. Like, cause that's the thing Kiara is supposed, I believe it's explicitly pointed out. It's supposed to be a counterpoint. Cause she's the final boss of the sequel is that mm-hmm. she could be a saver if she wasn't so much of an asshole. Mm-hmm. So that could be the, that could be the funny altar. The, the, Oh, you think you're going to get dark evil or Kiara? It's, no, that's not how it works. She's already as evil and, and shifty as she can be. Well, that's the interesting thing about her alter ego is her alter ego is kind of supposed to be that, but not. Yeah. Um. So again, um. who knows? It's possible. There are things in the background at work, maybe, kind of. Yes, chair squeak. Yeah, my mic arm, actually. My mic arm is very squeaky. I think I gotta, like, loosen it up and maybe get some WD-40 or something. Yeah. Very squeaky. Though. But, Toronto, thank you very much. And our last one, probably the spiciest one. I was actually debating if I should actually read this and give this person um, the keck they want. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Here on Studio Mega, we're honest and we're forthright. So, this is from Fate Zero is Overrated. Sup, Lucky Omega. Which is your favorite characteristic out of all the Beast of Calamities? I.e. Beast Force characteristic being comparison. Also, I gotta ask your favorite Fate anime series and why is it Carnival Phantasm? You may give a different wrong opinion to this question if you so desire. P.S. The last bit is just from fun. You can like whatever you want. Just know that you'll be judged. Just I will be for my alias. I understand why some people would say that series overrated. A lot of people... Uh, there is a reverse factor of that. A lot of people are like, Zero is the coolest! It's the best! Um, and they get really annoyed that not everything is as dark and soul-crushing as Zero. <laughs> well, actually, I'm not gonna lie. Carnival Phantasm is pretty fucking up there. Oh, it's pretty... Yeah. But honestly, like... Uh, oh, God. See, it's always hard for me, like, hard for me to pick, like, a favorite, because some of them I only like because of them in context with other entries, you know? Right. Like, I, like, I fucking adore, and I mean this, adore today's menu for Emmy a Family. I still have that bookmark on, on Crunchyroll, so, like, I, like, I need something to heal my soul right fucking now. But I, I can only say that it's great because I have seen the soul crushing that goes on. Right, and you know those characters in another context, and that makes yeah, sense. That's, like, honestly, that's why Carnival Phantasm is so fun. Yeah, so as like, like it's really hard for me just to say a favorite, and just you know, like Unlimited Playworks and its budget and its story and its progression is great. The Heavens Feel movies, like oh my god, we're going about we're going back to Soul Crushing. Ugh. No, I'll just come out and say it. I I I really do still like Unlimited Playworks the best mm-hmm. out of the animes. But that's that's just that's a that's a snap value judgment right now. You asked me that question like. Nah, fuck it. I'll say unlimited play works. That's how I feel. Um, honestly, I'm probably gonna say I'm probably gonna say um, heaven's feel, even though it's not complete. Honestly, uh, like I guess the said, first part of that question about the beast—that's an interesting one. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have to say like just because I understand it the most, I'm gonna have to say uh, beast two TMS of regression. Yeah, reg- I, I would say it. it would have to be for me probably pity or regression. Those are the yeah. those are the ones that are easiest to wrap your head around. And honestly, a lot of in- like like what we do with three, and we'll see some more from three from mm-hmm. three in the future too but what they do with three is interesting how they kind of parallel but also it's it's not i also don't think it's that unique but like pity pity as a negative is a really interesting idea they've taken and then just regression mm-hmm. is just so understandable right yeah like i said like i said again about understanding your empathy like understanding like tia matt and why her power and why she is it's just like oh man that hurts my soul and so like big mama just just bend down and let me give you some head pats jesus fuck girl you're so sad, and I understand big mama energy, and that's actually translated into a power, which I think is really fucking crazy. Because like this is a little bit of the verge, but again, I love the beasts as a concept. I really, really yeah, do. It's a really that's a really good one that Nas- Nasu I think has been working on for a while. It's remember they're like I said, beasts. Like again, just a quick recap of why I love them. Beasts are not a evil that destroys humanity. Beasts are an evil that humanity overcomes, which means that from the outset they are meant to be defeated and each beast in their own right is not something that necessarily hates humanity but loves humanity in their own twisted fashion right it's just like oh god it hurts my soul every fucking time no it's a really it's a really nasty concept that really really works though yeah and as someone who likes anime children like as i said like i love adopting smalls and like this is my child now like 
Tiamat just rearrests, like, no, no, stay small and cute forever and stay here with me. Let me give you head pads and Fiji snacks. Just, ugh. So, yeah. And just her ability just to force things back into, like, per, like, like, um, how do they have this progression uh, specifically? What was worded? Um, fuck. Can't remember. But just Tiamat just, just trying to enforce that with just her power. She's like, oh, God. No, yeah, no. the, the, the hating people for progressing and wishing things would go back to the way they were. Yeah. She doesn't want you to leave the nest and will well, we'll basically reverse evolve you to do it. Yeah, she wants she's she's willing to go to extreme lengths to set things back. Yeah. Uh, so oh, that was clear. mailbag at three hours. Exactly. <laughs> I'm so, I'm that literally was an hour and a half. That's okay. We literally fat several times in there. And like like you said, there was no news, and there's really not too much in free talk. Like, we can talk about Goody Goody 3, but also neither of us are super far. Do we just want to hold off? Like, okay, so... Uh, I mean, we can do real- Goody Goody... Imp- uh, there's one thing in, in free talk I do want to mention, because it was explicitly pointed to me out by the audience. Right. Um, it'll be a little bit of a weed lap, weed lap, I think, but I'll, I'll mention this first, is that um, some of you may not know, uh, but there is still one guy, at least one person, in the comments of every Twitter thread and on YouTube or whatever, who's still mad about Emia Alter being localized. Uh, we'll call oh. it that, being localized. Oh. Uh, still mad. Uh, Lucky and I don't really pay attention to this too much because Twitter replies and YouTube comments are usually trash. Not ours, we read those, but generally with other people, they're bad. Um, but this was, um, I didn't see it myself, because generally, I, like I said, I don't pay attention to these things, but it was called out to me that uh, apparently this person is so unbelievably and unreasonably still mad that they uh, made an image involving Emia Alter and Albert, which harkens to current events, which I'm not going to name because I don't want... YouTube's ears are very good, and I don't want them to, like, shim, be like, well, are you trying to pull a monetization shim-sham on sensitive content? No. No, no. Just bringing this up. Um, Which, normally, my response to this kind of, like, attention-seeking asshole is to just ignore them, but it was pointed out to me, and much like earlier, in a different way, I was so incredibly polaxed by this that I was just like, all right, I'll bring it up on the show. Uh, because this is so unbelievably, egregiously inappropriate on every level that I was just like, okay, I'll mention it. Mm-hmm. I don't think we need to go into detail, but just, sir mm-hmm. or madam, if you are if you are listening right now, why? Why, though? Why did you think this would be okay? And um, if you're the 99% of other people out there, I just want to say, um, that's not okay. Don't be an asshole that is not, never has been, and never will be appropriate. Don't. Nope. Don't just don't. Uh, and uh, I will not advocate violence, but um, I probably wouldn't be upset if this person fell down some stairs. I think that's a, I think that's Omega's favorite a favorite way of dealing with people. He just doesn't care if they exist anymore. I will not push you downstairs. YouTube, don't tell me I said that. But um, <laughs> if something bad happened to you, I would not care. So just gonna throw that one out there. Stay mad, I guess. This is what we talked about earlier. We talked. I think it was a little bit off mic with some on mic too. We were just like neither Lucky or I really feels any any desire to quote unquote stay mad about stuff like and and honestly this is why just because if you stay mad about stuff you start getting weird Mm -hmm. uh but okay the only other thing in our in our free talk is the mention of um basically we call it guda guda three first impressions uh and and honestly we can give our first impressions or not um let's see uh lucky how many missions are you in on i'm like at 16 now yeah i'm at like 20 i think i finished 22 a while ago when i stopped i was because i was at 20 so I did, like, two more over the course of this. Lucky will um, be working on it, but I'm looking at titties and ass on Twitter, as Lucky does. So, yeah. Uh, I think... That Samus has big Well, moves. yeah, if you're uh, if you're at, like, 16 or so, then you're probably not any farther than um, Lee either. That's as far in the story yeah. as I've gotten. Yeah, no, I just... I beat Lee, like, last night. Yeah, I think just the, the key thing about first impressions is, one, uh, the game does have a... This, this event does have a steep, steep uh, startup curve. Like, they do not softball you. They immediately throw you into the heavy shit to let you know oh, that this, this event will be hard. It is post Solomon, so it makes sense, but it was like, wow, okay. No kid gloves. Um, that also is part of a major whip, mood whiplash we've talked about way earlier in this episode, three hours ago, um, where I don't, I don't, I don't quite understand why, but there's a dumb Gouda Gouda style skit about Okita Alter, right? Yeah, right at the beginning. With Nobu about how weird she is. Um, but then you immediately get ray shifted into the uh, Imperial Holy Grail War Tokyo, where number one, a fucking Nobu shoots somebody. They don't change the sprite either. It's just a weird little Nobu fucking caps somebody in the street. Nobu, Nobu, bang. Yeah, literally. Nobu, Nobu, bang. <laughs> what? What is happening right now? 
which is a it's thing I think you serious. can say later about a different event. Um, and then you meet Sirius Nobu, uh, who wears a great coat. Sprite. Great sprite. Uh, yeah, I looks great. Sprite. I'm pretty sure Paku drew that. The complete and utter madman that he is. Um, and she just tries to murder you. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. She's got her serious face on. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm just, I'm commanding her. Is that a Nobu? It has a gun! Nobu, Nobu. Yeah. Nobu, I need Nobu. that edit. Somebody do that. Somebody draw that comic. Um, but yeah, so, like, we immediately start in a dark and weird place. Um, I've noticed that, um, I think it's interesting what they're doing with Oki to alter how she's, as far as I can tell, she's basically like the reverse of Melt. Um, oh, yeah, where she's slowly getting stronger. Yeah, Melt slowly decreased in strength in turn with the story, which is really interesting. And in this case, um, Okita is, by admission of most people, really, really weak, but she, Okita, uh, Okita Alter is slowly getting stronger as you follow her in the story. Like, she literally couldn't speak in her first appearance, but learns to speak. Very interesting. Love it a lot. Um, uh, I think the only other big thing is, the only other character we see a lot of is Izo, who is interesting. He's he's a little he's a little fluffy edge lad. He is very soon there. I liked I like his confrontation with uh, his confrontation with Lee, and I'm kind of sad that sad that Lee went out so quick. I'm like, damn. Yeah, but I think it's only because we're doing a traditional Grail setup, so we have to like beat all the bosses, right? Oh, um, also, I want something. So if, this, if there's something that I love about fucking Japanese, is they have fucking verbal ticks for everything. Yes, like um, Lee Shu wins is his laugh, which is literally ka ka ka. Right. Yeah, and if you've ever heard him speak like in Extella, he just does ka ka. I appreciate this. He's a chuckler. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of really interesting things going on. Oh, the source of Okiten? That's in. Do you mean in in game? I don't know yet. I'm sure that's the big reveal in in the story. We talked about it where she was to do the thing at the end. Um, Okita combines her Saint Graph with Demon Archer to make Devil Saber, and it's very tryhard. Uh, but for now, I don't think we're far enough along in the event because it's a little slow going. Some people mm-hmm. might be farther than me, but yeah. Um, Lee is, um, interesting, I appreciate that, like, like, because he talks about how, and I said this in my Wanted, which is another thing I'll bring up in a second, the Wanted stuff that I wanted to talk about, but, um, he mentions that Izo is a genius swordsman, but died young, he doesn't have a lot of experience, even as a heroic spirit, um, which is true, right? Like, he seems that way, he's young and cocky, um, whereas Lee, even in his Lancer form, which is his young form, has all of his long-ass experience, because Lee got to be an old man. Um, and so he, bo- Lee gets to drop the classic line on Izo. No, you're more talented than me. The difference was in our experience. Blam. You know, <laughs> which is, Sorry, which I'm... is one of those, those spiffy zingers I love. Mm. Um, I'm not like this, but, um, so that's really fun. Um, Izo has interesting conversations back and forth with Yoma. He's very spicy about stuff. He's very, I, I appreciate that Izo is very, I like him cause he's kind of, he's kind of fun and he has kind of a try hard air about him, but he's not so good or so serious that like you can't you can't enjoy him you know right um the only other major character i think we've seen a lot of is well hijikata is in it um he mostly just asks people who they're with and yells shinsengumi Mm -hmm. um is um ryoma and oreo uh uh, big oreo big eat energy i like how she i like how she simultaneously switches i'm gonna eat you too i'm gonna take care of you want a frog yeah it's great i love i love I love Oreo. Honestly, so my she's favorite, so honest, my my favorite moment so far with Oreo is where she's literally passed out in the background, and you see her sprite sleeping, and then Roma's like, "Are you listening?" She's like, oh, huh, "I'm awake." Yes, um, I love it's how real fun. Like, um, I has, love, like, I love though that she's like, "Oh, you didn't die. I can't eat you." Like, I, I yeah, joke. Is, do, is are we sure Oreo isn't a saber? <laughs> she. I like her. how her solution to all wounds is let me spit on it. I'm like, Oreo spit is healing. And it's hey, like, it probably hey, is, but piece of piece. Of also, I love her line in the uh, in the CE. It's uh, like, hurry up and make the double P so I can't take the picture. By the way, Oreo-san made a bunch of these, so use these to level up your craft bits or whatever. Yeah, it's funny. It's, uh, it's funny. Um, you know, there is a lot of interesting vibes about the Oreo. Also, she just blocks bullets and is so strong. Like, and when 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 Ease is going to stab Ryoma, she's like, whoa, Oreo's not okay with this. <laughs> and Ryoma's just like, no, no, it's fine. Let him, let him get his... I know how to take my lumps. Although, they are, like... I never really figured this because I don't know anything, but Ryoma is kind of fucking sketchy as hell in this scenario. I'm like, what is your game? I, I like him. He's a good, you, you know, he, you can tell he's a good guy, but he's also a little bit shifty by nature. Yeah. But yeah, he's a, I think, I think the politician bit is the key is he is a politician yeah. at his core, which means yes. he's a little, he's a little bit shifty, but you like him because he's pretty, like, I, like, he's pretty nice and it, casual and good. I find it hilarious that he runs into Hijikata of all fucking people. I'm all like, this will not end well, no matter what. No, it won't. Well, and that's because he's in a very, yeah, he's like, when he recognizes the Howry, he's like, 
Yeah, those guys gave us a lot of trouble. Because in case you guys don't know, um, uh, Ryoma is from the end of the Bakumutsu period, going into the Meiji Restoration. Yes. Um, that is, and the re- that is the reason why um, Izo is so mad at him, is because uh, Ryoma actually pushed for modernization and westernization. Yes. Um, whereas Izo was part of the, the, the Tosa clan and, and supported, I think he was one of the, they were part of the last supporters of the Tokugawa Shogun. Yes. So, like, he, he is an old-fashioned samurai murder lad, whereas Ryoma was like, no, we're going to get modern. Yeah, Ryoma is specifically one of the people who brought the Satsuma and um, Choshu um, regions together and know the, the Satcho alliance, which was on, honestly one of the big pushes that overthrew the uh, Shogunate. So, yeah. It's... Uh, yeah, Axis raised a good point. Guda Guda goes back to a lot of themes because of the characters, right? Because it Guda Guda, it basically bookends this period, basically bookends the Tokugawa era, I think. Because it starts with Nobunaga, who enabled that to happen, and then yes. it ends a lot with characters like Ryoma and like Iza, who are late into that period, and then with Shinsengumi characters. Mm-hmm. Um, it bookends a lot of really interesting parts of Japanese history, which obviously they go super deep into. Like, like uh, Izo's not actually well written about outside of Japan, but in Japan he's pretty popular. He's been the subject of movies and J dramas where he is often said to be friends with Ryoma and like been a popular basis of characters. Um, like he wasn't explicitly a character, but he was the basis for a character in um, Ruin Kenshin stuff like that. Like a lot of those those classic uh, show ups. Who was the basis for Kenshin though? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, is, I can't it, remember. Is it? It's somebody. Somebody will give it to us. It's fine. We've been going for three hours. It's we're sleepy down here. Um, but it's a very interesting plot, and I'm ready to solve it. Um, one, the show's already super long, but this week we're not going to do well for a corner on Rio, like just because he's still temp. Like you can't. Mm-hmm. I am. Um, I th- like theoretically, if you're speedballing the missions, you might get to him permanently, but it's still a ways off. We'll 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 kip off and wait until we have a less full show and kind of write that in. Um, and I, <laughs> so- I like I said, I want to make sure we get we get plenty of detail on that because people are really interested in it. Mm-hmm. But we'll let him. Uh. Uh, no, you don't, you shouldn't need to do the epilogue. Or do you need to do the epilogue, but not the parts? Nah, this event confuses me. Um, you get Ryoma before you get the grail, is the thing. So, the the grail is you have to do all the extra shit. Okay, so there's a, there's a lot of missions to unlock to get him. So it's, it's well, hold on, is what I'm saying. Um, the only other thing I did want to throw out there about Guda Guda, besides just the generally kind of the interesting back and forth, it's a, this one's a really good attempt to do serious, but also comedic. I like it a lot. The mechanics are also fun. I love mission-based um, events. But, um... Other than the banner being super cursed, the only other one I think I bring up is Wanted. So I did two Wanteds again, uh, mm-hmm. one on the five star and one on the uh, one on the the limited smaller one, which is a three star in this case, uh, which everybody was verbally um, very excited for and very asking for. I got multiple requests or multiple people assuming, and lots of and in general, um, I hear more from people being excited about Iso. Like everybody's like, ah, I don't need no Okutan because we've talked about this. Meta tryhards don't like Okutan; she's too boring. Uh, this is in my wanted video. There's nothing wrong with her kit. It's just there's nothing. It's not like crazy unique like some other alter egos. Yeah, it's very basic. But ah, um, oh. uh, I'm I'm looking at my analytics right now. Interestingly enough, and um, like uh, Okutan performing super well. Um, let me actually sort my views really here and overall look at it. Okay. Uh, yeah, no. Um, she's actually officially. It's uh, YouTube isn't caught up yet, but she's overtaken Abigail. What? Yeah. Um, latest reported numbers is um. Oh, hold on, we're still accidentally left it sorted by views. Uh, come back now. Uh, but she is at almost twenty four hundred views. Uh, Abigail is twenty one hundred. So okay to alter. Super popular video. Really pulling its weight. Loads of comments. Very good like ratio. Loads and loads of likes. So Izo which everybody would have assumed would be the more popular one and the way more better, um, that video is arguably underperforming. Like, that's definitely got to be middle of the road or on the low end of wanted videos. It hasn't even broken 1K views yet. Um, and it, I'm just like, I'm just very interesting to see this. Like, I wouldn't have pegged Okita as so popular, but I guess people are searching for her and it's really popping off and there's loads of comments, whereas Izo is just not as popular. It's a little weird. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think I think overall what I'm what I'm seeing from this is that like a, a lot of people have said they like it, but overall it's not really it's not necessarily worth any extra effort or or complication to put out these special alternate wanteds. Um, like a lot of people really didn't watch the Fujino one, they didn't really watch the Passion Lip one. Um, you know, I did some bonuses like the the Iza one's not doing really great. Uh, I think if I have time, I can still probably pull out a couple of them just because they're fun. 
But if there's like a time crunch, I will tell you that these will definitely, much like some of the older permanent five stars and whatnot, that the the four and three star one ins will definitely end up on the cutting room floor at this rate, just because there really isn't the extra interest to to warrant any extra effort, you know. Um, but I'm our our publishing schedule video wise is still pretty fast and loose, so like a lot of the time, like I shot both of these way ahead of the banner. Like um, I think patrons had access to the Okita wanted for like not quite a week, but for quite quite a long time before they even announced announced the event officially. Like I was really on top of it. Um. So we'll we'll have to kind of see where that shakes out, but sometimes they don't give me a lot of time. So oh, well that reminds me, I have something that one, once uh, once you're done, I have one more thing to ask about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Well, somebody brought up summer. Um. Well, there wouldn't be summer Reiko anyway. That was already old. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Like a lot of people like like Mori, who's the who's basically the Ezo of the next Guda Guda banner. But I do again, even though if people say that, I don't know if that video is gonna pop off like. Okita really popped off. Don't know why. Um, I guess she's a character design wise, she is a really popular unit, and I don't know. Maybe, maybe we're over meta stuff. We'll see. We'll, it'll be very interesting to see to compare Wanted Scotty, which will definitely one hundred percent will be coming out. Very interesting to see how that video does. Like, will that like Merlin was a pretty popular one, but he's not. He's not one of my tippy toppists. So it'll be very interesting to see how Scotty does. Will that waifu power sail out? Um, though uh, again, Abigail was my previous. One so waifu power is not necessarily the selling point. Cute is justice. But yeah, so that's just my little thoughts on kind of how that one goes out. And we'll we'll see what stuff does in the future. All right. So a long time ago, Lucky made some jokes talking about how he would do um, parody lists, and his first one being you know top ten um, FGO swimsuits. And since we're getting close to that time, I'm starting to like, I actually got to wonder: Do people actually want to see that kind of content of just? actual list videos that aren't anything serious and me just having a heck for the I'm, fun of it. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've heard people say that. Yeah, I know, but but I want to pull some hard data. So probably like over the weekend or maybe Monday when I make the community post, I'll definitely be putting up a poll of gauging on our community tab because we've been abusing it. Abusing! A little bit, um, but also the community tab is actually... It's actually really popping. Yeah. It's interesting. Um... I'll be putting up a poll of, do you want um, a parody FGO list? Um, I said I have two on my head. I have two on my list. Well, top two FGO list and top ten fluffiest servants. Um, if I get a ton of positive feedback on that, like a lot of pieces of positive feedback on that, I'll definitely start putting that in the comments as soon as I figure out where the fuck my, how to get my editing software again. That's something I should buy. I need to buy that fucking external hard drive breeder thing. That's what I yeah, need to do. Yeah, you need to work on that project. Yeah, but um, yeah, because if I do the top two and FGOs, that's probably not going to be after Summer 3. If I do it before Summer 3, it'd be like, like, why, why, why don't you wait? And if I did, so I want to do it afterwards. Because that way I'll have all the English materials for mm-hmm. Summer 3, and I can add that to the list. And Fluffy Servants as well, that's just fun. I'm going to get a bunch of Fluffy Servants, and I'm going to compare their fluff. Like, like how like how nappable is the Servant? It's going to be great. But as I said, I need, like I said, I need, I need confirmation. I need people to validate my choices, all right? Right. Like, <laughs> so comment on this video, but also make sure to keep your eye out for when Lucky specifically does a call out post to like see the variables, like do a poll yeah. or something. Yeah, and just yeah. keep you know get out the word. Oh, the, the, speaking of some of that, that does remind me because that was another thing I was going to think of. Um, and this is a reminder I've announced this before, but um, for if you were thinking about wanted for summer servants for new summers, I will actually um probably two videos just because I don't want them to be super long, but I will actually just do a great big kit bash video of all of them. Like the two banners, uh, rather than rather than necessarily do like just the 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 two SSRs, I'll probably just because you know we're still definitely probably for the rest of this year we're probably still gonna experiment with any limited four stars. Not that there's a lot, um, but we'll still see some stuff. And who knows, maybe I'll do some fun gimmicks because I'm the guy who's always talking about like gonna roll lot you know for Lost Belt three with Consort U and stuff. Like we could do dumb jokes. Um, mm-hmm. We will always do stuff to amuse ourselves. Um, <laughs> the question is just, will we keep doing them if nobody if nobody laughs at our jokes? No. Um, but we'll at least do the first one to see what happens. And then kind of, like, go from there. But um, uh, I will be doing basically two big summer videos, which will be all of the ones on one banner and all the ones on the other banner, just to lump them all together. Because um, I've talked about this before with um, original characters and with weird alts. Uh, they're... There's not really a wealth of information to mine for the the fluff bits of Wanted, you know? Because, 
it, King Arthur in a swimsuit is King Arthur in a swimsuit. Okay, that's it. That's all. That's that took like two seconds. Bye. Now mechanics. Boom. But um, yeah. So that's just something I want to keep in mind. Uh, I think our final wrap up topic is I do want to mention it is a new month. Thanks so much for supporting us, patrons. But um, we do have a new monthly topic poll. So from last time, I did add what are phantasmal species because I don't think we've actually gone down the list and explained all that stuff. Uh, we've talked about the reverse side and things and maybe alluded to some of them, but we haven't gone all out on what, what the whole different tiers of like phantasmal species and stuff is. Because there's a tier list. It's Nasu. Um, so that's added. There's also what is Divine Spirit and what is Magecraft. And uh, currently, with 16 votes and 10 days left, Divine Spirit and phantasmal species are tied. So, uh, Lucky, why don't you go ahead and tell me what you'd break the tie with? Ah, uh, phantasmal spirits, probably. Okay. I like beasties. All right, so we'll keep we'll keep that in, I'll keep that in mind if it's still tied when the poll runs out. Lucky's a horrible person. I see an animal, I'm like immediately, no matter how big and scary, I'm just like I want to pet it. Pet, pet. Even when you're, I'm getting attacked by a fucking sea snake underwater, like I want to be this thing's friend. I'm excited for Star Wars. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Sorry, I was trying. <gasps> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. But is it a saber lion? Uh, yeah, so I think that's the show. Um, in long format, unedited, we're about three hours and 20 minutes. But we got through it. Uh, I'm sure next week we'll be back to talk more about Uda Guda and to have even more mailbag and to talk about whatever JP is doing because Requiem will be over. Will it exist? Who knows? Still waiting on that, uh, Steno and Yurale animation update. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's it. Okay. Lucky, you got any final thoughts? No, no, that's it. Okay. All right. Well, then we're just going to get out of here. Hey! watching this video on youtube be sure to give it a like if you liked it if you have any comments leave in the comment section down below you can also hit us up on our discord that link is as always in the description and on our channel page it's a great place come hang out and if you're new here and haven't already please subscribe to our channel so you can always get our latest videos like let's talk fgo like our regular podcast about whatever what's up and uh you know other stuff like wanted and future top 10 videos by lucky <laughs> and even if you're already subscribed considering that bell for notifications i did notice that um our percentage has gone up a little bit we're at about 20 percent have notifications turned on at all but uh, still, if you want to make sure you always catch when we post a new video or when we stream, uh, yeah, get in there. You know, hit that bell. And like it says at the front of the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to have it early in audio format for as little as a dollar a month and lots of other stuff. And it really does help us out. Like like I've talked about, there's some stuff we'll do for a, for a goof or for a, for a, an experiment. And uh, the, the, the patron money really helps us, you know, get that set up to like do those experiments. Uh, and I'll have some stuff to talk about on WhatsApp about that, I think. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Uh, that's the show, so, uh, stay tuned next week for more Let's Talk FGO. Tune in later for What's Up. Uh, be sure to check out our APs, not just the Fate one, though the third part of that did post, but we have lots of other APs, which are really interesting, mm-hmm. if you're mm-hmm. into that sort of thing. And, check uh, out our latest part. we'll see all that other stuff. Bye. Nobu-ba. Run away. Nobu?